Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Champaign, home of the University of Illinois. We are just minutes away from kickoff of the 3A state championship game between Aurora Christian and Mount Carmel. Both very good red hot teams with very contrasting styles of football you're going to see in this game. For more on this game, let's toss it up to the booth. Danon Hughes and Dave Bernhardt. Guys. All right. Thank you very much, Aaron. And uh, we're happy to be here. We've waited all day to get to this point, And these two teams have as well. Aurora Christian and Mount Carmel. You talk about a couple of teams, Danon, that are really hungry for a championship. Aurora Christian in 2008, they came up short to Bloomington Central Catholic. And in 2001, 2002, Mount Carmel, second place to Driscoll. They're ready to roll tonight. Yes, they are. You know, it's been a long time coming for both of these teams. It's going to be very exciting, Dave, when you look at them evenly matched in that factor. They're both hungry. They're both ready to take center stage right now and see what happens. It's going to be exciting. Both these two teams so very confident. We're getting set. We have our 3A state championship game coming up. It's Aurora Christian. It's Mount Carmel. And it's coming to you on the IHSA television network. This is a presentation of the IHSA TV network. State championship game today from Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois. Matches the Eagles from Aurora Christian and the Golden Aces from Mount Carmel. Now, hi again, everybody. Dave Fernhardt along with Dana and Hughes. We talk about two schools, two teams that come from different areas geographically. They come from different offensive styles as well. We're going to see Aurora Christian spread it out. We'll see Mount Carmel pack it in. And for Aurora Christian, you don't want anybody else but number nine spreading it out for you, and that's Don Beebe's Anthony Matty. Oh, my goodness. When you look at the numbers that this young man has produced, he is the centerpiece of this offense. Over 3,700 yards of passing. But look, brace yourself. 64 touchdowns he's accounted for for this offense. They're looking for some success again from him today. Okay, he can do a lot with his arm and his legs. You talk about legs, it's Dallas Cook for Mount Carmel, the fullback. They love to pound it with him. Well, this, this is a fullback-driven offense, Dave, and you and I know this, and we've seen this young man on tape. 1,400 yards, 24 touchdowns. They're looking for a big day from him as well. Contrasting styles, yet they meet in the 3-8 championship. We're getting set. Both sides of this field are ready to roll. Aurora Christian, Mount Carmel, it's coming your way next. A nine-game regular season leads to what is hopefully for two teams in the state a five-game playoff. For these two teams, they've navigated the playoff road for Aurora Christian. Here's how they got here. Early wins against Kiwani and then Oregon. And we take a look at the Mount Carmel side. After avenging a loss to Harrisburg from the season over, a win over Benton, Cook, Wagner combined for over 100 yards in the fullback position when Darren Peach got his 100th win in that win over Anna Jonesboro and then in that semifinal win over Greenville, the big win, 495 yards rushing for the Golden Aces. As we said, four Aurora Christian wins over Kiwani and Oregon to get things started. And then it was the Anthony Maddy show that got it going for the Eagles in that quarterfinal against Winnebago. Maddy with 397 yards of total offense. And then the semifinal win, the big win over Unity. That was a game in which Aurora Christian trailed with eight minutes left, 26-21. You see the final score, and that's why these two teams have made it right here. The sun is setting here on Memorial Stadium. The crowd is ready to go. The players are ready to fire it up. And when we come back, we will have that kickoff. 3A football coming up next. We are ready for kickoff of the 3A state championship game here on the IHSA television network. IHSA state championships are brought to you by Country Financial. I just had a chance to speak with Aurora Christian head coach Don Beebe. He said there are two keys for his team to win this game. Number one is the turnovers. They have to win the turnover battle. He said in his mind that is the number one stat in this game. He also said we have to use Mount Carmel's pack it in style against them. He says we need to get them in third and long situations so that they can't get a first down the way they like to get first downs. Now, he said, saying we're going to do that is one thing, and actually making it happen is a completely different story. Now, for more on Mount Carmel, let's send it over to their sideline and Sophia Menner. 
Aaron, bad news because Mount Carmel head coach Darren Peach said the same thing that they had to win the turnover battle. He said defensively, we have to be ourselves and by that we need to get our hands on the ball. He said we've been forcing turnovers all throughout the playoffs. We certainly need to do that today and get some picks. Keep Maddie off the field. Offensively, Dallas Cook certainly is what makes this team go and he just kind of laughed and said, hey, we're just going to keep running him and see how far he'll take us in this game. We need to be physical up front. We re need him to be physical as well today. He said, bottom line, it's our strength versus their speed. David, go back up to you. Thank you very much, Sophia. This game is presented to you today by Country Financial. Marauder Christian will get their hands on the ball first, and so uh, Dana and I guess it's pretty simple. We, we can just sit back, watch the turnover battle, whoever wins that wins the game. Exactly. I mean, when you talk about the coaches, uh, you always, you always, uh, always notice coaches that are recognized that as a huge factor in the ball game, and obviously playing this game, it has always been a prime factor in wins and losses. When we talk about the quarterback Anthony Maddie, you will see him right there chasing down that kickoff that goes out of bounds. Anthony Maddie can do it all. Dana talked about those 50 touchdown passes. He rushes for 14. You know, we want to make sure we clear this up right away for a lot of folks. Don Beebe wants to make sure we clear it up. Anthony Maddie has gotten a lot of publicity, but this is not strictly a passing team. This is a team that will run the ball, and they have for over 2,000 yards this year. Well, they're very balanced, but everything runs through number nine, and that's what's going to be interesting about this ball game to see how the Golden Aces set up defensively to not only stop the passing abilities of Maddie, but also his running ability and how he's able to divert off track and make things happen. See those 50 touchdown passes. That's fourth best all time single season record in IHSA football history. The Eagles to start it from their 20. They'll start it in the air. Completion. Eight yard pickup for Corey Wendell, the leading receiver for Aurora Christian. Here's the offensive lineup for the Eagles from Aurora looking to claim their first title in the city of Aurora's history. We talk about the skill position players but it's up front they get it done Julian Sosa stepped in nicely in that offensive line Nick Larson Eric Motisi as well Josh Cook and there's the skill position players you'll hear those names a lot the Roberts brothers one a senior Grayson and Noah the sophomore their brothers a former Aurora Christian quarterback great Jordan Roberts and that was part of that 2018 eight yards on first down for Aurora Christian here's Maddie he has the option looking for window and that ball sails up and away and defensively for Mount Carmel they have won 12 games in a row after a season opening loss they are on a streak and defensively they have gotten the job done here it is Hinleiter, Howder and Farmer Dylan Farmer and all state are on that defensive front good linebackers and Clayton Cole Wampler there's Dallas Cook going both ways and Colton Schuler defensive secondary Nathaniel Wagner is Sheldon Hanna double in the offensive backfield for the Golden Aces and a third down and two <laughs> Maddie first down and more Anthony Maddie he's got wheels to the 40 Anthony Maddie will take it in his 15th rushing touchdown of the year. This for 72 yards and a 6 to nothing Aurora Christian lead. What a great display of athleticism by Maddie. And it all starts up front, like you said, to see Ryan Zerwinski, the center, open up the gap up front. Just a basic quarterback sneak, taking advantage of the defense and how spread open they are. You wondered how how Aurora Christian would fare up the middle and being able to take advantage of a spreading out that defense and there you go right there the top athlete on the field right now Anthony Maddie comes through with a huge play to open up the game for the Eagles Julian Sosa for the extra point and it's not going to happen so the Eagles will have to settle for six but there is the quick strike offense that we were ready to see from Aurora Christian and for Mount Carmel. This season, the playoffs, they have played several teams that play out of the spread formation. They may not have played against a quarterback this good. Here's the block on that extra point. You can see good pressure up front, playing on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And they get their hands up just enough time to get the ball knocked down to hold them down to six points. 
There you see Anthony Matty. He's a veteran of these state championship games. Back in 2009, he was the quarterback for Joliet Catholic in that memorable loss to Montini, that last second loss on a two-point conversion in that game. Matty was 0 for 8 passing the ball in that game. He transferred from Joliet Catholic Academy. He loved Joliet Catholic. He loved the football that Don Beebe played and coached with at Aurora Christian. He's been there the last two years, and he likes to run the ball as well. Well, you can see he's deadly with his legs and his arm. He opened up the game with a, a nice, oh, solid oh, play, oh, just oh, a hitch oh, route on the outside. Third and two, takes advantage of exactly what the defense gives him, scampers for the touchdown. Three plays, 80 yards, only took 22 seconds, the last 72 yards from Anthony Maddy. Kicking into a pretty strong wind. To about the 30-yard line. On the return for the Golden Aces, Alex Keeper, a return of 23. Nice solid return right there. It's going to be interesting to see how the Golden Aces come back. They recognize coming into this ball game, and we know we talked about the coaches and the turnover ratio, but they knew that the big play and strike ability of Anthony Maddy and the Eagles was going to come into play early on. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Golden Aces come back and bounce back right afterwards in their first possession. This is a team that will maybe not score as quickly as Aurora Christian, but they will be methodical about it. They will get a quick six yards in that opening carry by Dallas Cook. This is a Mount Carmel team that rushes for 291 yards per game. They throw it for 80, but they will only throw six to eight passes per ball game. So time of possession, maybe you can toss that one out of the window here today. Well, we talked to Coach Darren Peach earlier this week. He talked about this offense being a flex bone offense, very similar to Navy and what you see with Georgia Tech and the college game, and they like to run the football. Everything revolves around that fullback in Dallas Cook. There you go, right there, first down across the 45-yard line. The offensive lineup for Mount Carmel looks this way. Bogart, Johnson, Smith, Peach, that's the coach's son, and Seth Shalaski up front. Receivers, Pete Condell, Nathaniel Wagner will run the ball. We talked about Dallas Cook. Dylan Farmer, a tight end. He's an all-stater on the defensive side, Alex Keeper as well. But again, these two tight ends are in there mainly to do some blocking. 15 yards in the first two plays here for Mount Carmel, and that will net zero. And the defensive unit for Aurora Krishna comes up big right there. They're led by number 34 on that particular tackle, Kenny McCracken. You see Jackson Hazlitt, Jonah Walker, and Josh Cook up front. They are quick. The linebacker is very active. Zerwinski, McQuaid, Subtle, McCracken, and Julian Sosa. The secondary, a lot of familiar names as well when you get to the defensive backfield. Brandon Mays, we'll see him a lot in the backfield. Cody Slamons and Brandon Waldron. You got to see that last play made by Kenny McCracken, number 34. 131 tackles coming into this ball game. The pitch to Pete Condell. There's McCracken again, making the play at the line of scrimmage. Very mobile linebacker for this Eagles team. Does a nice job sideline to sideline. He's one of the leaders of this defense and comes through with two consecutive plays and tackles to create third and long. And he's another player in this game that had experience. Back in 2008, he was a freshman on the Aurora Christian team that finished second. Get a look there at Sheldon Hannon, 6170 pound senior quarterback. His counterpart, number nine, Anthony Maddy, looks on. Third and long is exactly what Don Beebe wanted to put Mount Carmel in, and a pass overthrown from Hannah. He was under big pressure. Now, we should mention, Danon, the wind blowing very strongly from right to left. It's a south wind, and we were talking before we went on. You feel it is tougher to throw with the wind than against it. I think so. I think what you see, not only in the high school level, but college and the pros, is that players become accustomed to throwing into the wind. They recognize how much stronger they have to put the ball on. It's actually easier, Dave, to throw the ball harder than it is to take a little bit off of it and throw it softer. When you're throwing with the wind, like we say, going from right to left, the quarterbacks are going to have to pay special attention to dialing it back just a little bit, taking a little bit of velocity off the ball. Condell the kick, it's a good one. He uses the win to his advantage and gets a nice hop. Maddie will let this one roll and it will be down at about the three yard line. So Pete Condell with the big punt. However, when he looks up the scoreboard, he and his coach Darren Peach find themselves down by six after that 51 yard punt and we'll be back. Aurora Christian fans happy about the six to nothing lead. They look up though and they see that their team is back at the three yard line. Anthony Maddy stands about halfway deep into the end zone. 
Good field position as far as Mount Carmel is concerned. Manny will just take it up out of there, pick up of a couple. Now Pete Condal was the man with the punt. We also saw him on a little run. Condal had missed a couple of games in the playoffs. Lower back injury had broken a vertebrae. He's a big contributor back, and now he's going to count on his defense here to contain the Aurora Christian offense that comes in averaging 42 points per ball game. We saw that first play of this drive just gained a couple of yards, but a nice play by Sean Hindeleiter at the nose guard, number one, very unique to play at the nose guard position, a very athletic young man. Mandy out of the end zone. Boy, it looked like his intended receiver, Noah Roberts, was not going to see that when it flew by him at the 15-yard line. You talk about Hindleiter, six foot, 190 pound junior at the nose, a state qualifier in the 200 meter dash in junior high. So that's interesting. You put your <laughs> big nose right there with the uh, 200 yard speed. Well, you notice, you know, at, at the high school level, it's it, it's interesting where you place, and every coach has their own philosophy, Dave, where they place their best athletes or their most athletic players. Sean Hindleiter at the nose guard has two touchdowns on defense this year. So he's very active, can run sideline to sideline, and hopes to kind of slow down the run game up the middle. Maddie able to get it out to the seven. He was nearly dropped there at about the one. A nice job on the outside linebacker Colton Schuler stayed home and did his job. A lot of movement in the backfield by the Eagles can sometimes get the defense off course, have them peaking a little bit, not doing their job. Colton comes through, turns the play back in, and forces Maddie into the short game, creating fourth down. Alex Keeper is deep for Mount Carmel. We saw a picture of Maddie. He is the up man here in the punt formation. Noah Roberts, the punter for Aurora Christian. He'll be kicking against a pretty strong wind here. He gets a pretty good kick out of there. And Keeper will let this one hop it will stop at the 49-yard line. Pretty good field position here for Mount Carmel following that 44-yard kick. Golden Ace is trailing here early, 6 to nothing. You get a look at Darren Peach. He just picked up his 100th win of the season in the quarterfinal win over Anna Jonesboro. I shouldn't say of the season. That'd be a heck of a year for a coach <laughs> in his career, his 11-year career. His first two years, how about this? Did you talk about being spoiled? He was playing in a state championship game both in 2001 2002. His first two years as the head coach of Mount Carmel. He is a Mount Carmel grad. In fact, all but one coach on this staff are graduates of Mount Carmel. Second time they get their hands on the ball. Good, quick defense as backup fullback Sam Wampler will get the carry. Wampler, the semifinal. 203 yards and a couple of touchdowns, number 52, Nick Larson with the stop. Well, they have a nice little one-two punch going between Wampler and Cook, as you can see. And I think what the Eagles were trying to create, they did exactly right in that first drive on defense. Create third and long, force Hannah into a passing situation, comes into the game with only 698 yards passing and eight interceptions with 10 touchdowns. So you want to make them have to throw the ball and that's exactly how they do that with Kenny McCracken again by the ball a host of Eagles making that tackle but you create the third and long again in this situation of course it's the Golden Aces a little bit out of their element Dave and, and they're going to have to be able to make the adjustments especially with throwing with the wind. Well, this is a team that averages about six and a half yards per carry now that's over the course the entire season where the course of many different teams of various ability levels but on third down here and six yards to go. Maybe a little bit different story against a very fast Aurora Christian defense. Here is Hannah. Handel cannot hang on. Well, you can see the speed in the white jerseys. Sideline to sideline speed for the Eagles from Aurora Christian. Well, we talked about Hannah's throwing ability, and he hasn't fared very well all season, but you cannot blame that. That pass right there was right on the money. That has to be a play that Condo makes. He recognizes it, and they can't afford to have these kind of mishaps against a high potent offense by the Aurora Christian Eagles. Have to continue to keep drives going. They're going three and out and giving way too many opportunities to the Eagles and Anthony Maddy. Condal, a 51-yard kick moments ago. Won't quite get this much, but still, he will put Aurora Christian inside the 15-yard line following that 33-yard boot. 
We're about halfway through the first quarter, and it's a six-point Aurora Christian lead. Back at Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois, 3A championship football presented by Country Financial. Second time in the last two possessions that Aurora Christian starts inside the 15. Maddie guns it, floats a little bit on him. That was a pretty good stick there right at the end by number six, Nathaniel Wagner, and the man he hit, Chad Beebe, the coach's son now. Chad Beebe coming off a shoulder slash collarbone injury. He's had collarbone problems all year long. He was injured in the semifinal. Interesting to see him out here. Well, it is, and you know what? It's an interesting story because when we spoke with Coach Don Beebe this week, he talked about the broken collarbone and actually fractured, or they thought he fractured his foot on the same play. They prayed with him, they prayed on him, and they had no breaks. He played a good season this year, and uh, you know what, he hurt his shoulder, but it's good to see him back on the field. A second down and 10. Mays to the outside. Mays stays in bounds. And finally, they will mark him out at the 37-yard line, Brandon Mays. 23 yards. What a great job of athleticism. Brandon Mays at the wide receiver. Obviously, he gets the ball. He rushed 80 times for 681 yards this season with six touchdowns. You can see the junior is very elusive out in the open field, has the speed. Three tackles broken and breaks down the sideline for the huge game. Mays averaging 8.5 yards per carry. That will increase. A new set of downs here from the 37. He runs bigger than his 5 foot 11, 165 pound frame. Another big playmaker for the Christ Aurora Christian Eagles. Maddie able to find his man, but unfortunately for Aurora Christian fans, Ryan Suttle can't keep his feet. A flag is down at the 30. And this will go against the penalty, will go against Aurora Christian. Looked like the, the Eagles tried to set up a screen play right there, and when you're trying to set up a screen, it just didn't do well, and you have to give credit to the Golden Aces defense. They've snu sn snuffed it out from the beginning and was able to, uh, and that's a very difficult block to hold for that long a time. Holding, offense, 10 yard penalty from the, from the penalty, from the flag. Our referee today is Brad Stearns. He's being assisted by Brian Lakaitis, Bob Nesbitt, Chuck Snow, and Pat Moomy. Your officiating crew here in your 3A championship game. That penalty where it took place will push this ball back to the 20, make it first down and 26. Quickly, it goes out to Grayson Roberts. Roberts gets the penalty yardage back, plus five. Grayson Roberts, you talk about collarbones. I don't know what it is in Aurora, but it's Grayson Roberts. He missed the first five games this season with the broken collarbone. He pulls that one in for Maddie for 15 yards. Well, you can see these young men are not afraid of contact on the sideline. You see a lot of receivers. Sometimes we get the diva tag, Dave, because we like to run out of bounds. And I'm a <laughs> former receiver, so I can say that. But these young men, you know, we've seen them get violent on the sideline, just like a running back. So, as, uh, you know, sometimes those injuries happen when guys don't uh, or fail to run out of bounds and take the safe route. Second and long, looking for it big, looking for Wendell. Great coverage inside. That ball never had a chance to get to Wendell on the coverage. Nathaniel Wagner. What an outstanding throw down the sideline to see. And we talked about how strong the wind is going from right to left. And through the teeth of the wind, Anthony Maddy threw that ball about 50 yards in the air. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see when the quarter turns and he goes in the second quarter with the wind, how strong his arm is. And considering that that ball was thrown from one hash mark all the way to the far sideline, this shows you the strength in this young man's arm. It's a 20 mile per hour wind from the south. However, the temperature is a very comfortable 56 degrees here in your final weekend of November. Eagles need 12 yards here on third down, and they will get it. Great throw, great catch. Maddie to Wendell again. 
13 yards first down. Well great protection up front. It all starts up front. Walker and Motisi, Zorinski and Larson and Cook do a nice job. But right on the sideline just a comeback route right past the stake. And how about Wendell knowing exactly where he is on the field to get that right foot down. Only one foot needed obviously in high school and pro and in, in college. And he does a great job addition the ball. Nice throwing catch. Corey Wendell the six foot three 183 pound junior had a 142 yard reception game in the quarterfinals against Winnebago straight run all the way for Maddie and he gets almost 10 I mentioned Anthony Maddie went to Joliet Catholic Academy his first two years starting quarterback for the Hilltoppers in the 5A championship game his sophomore year he was 0 for 8 of course Joliet Catholic fans you get to see them tomorrow a running team well, they wanted to play for that man right there, Don Beebe, former NFL player with the Buffalo Bills, six-time Super Bowl member. He was going to spread the field. He knew that, made, or make that mad. He knew that he'd get a chance to throw the ball with Don Beebe. He comes over to Aurora. Well, 50 touchdowns passing, <laughs> 15 running this season. Pretty good decision. They need a yard here in first down. First down. They make it look pretty easy. The reception that time made by the sophomore Noah Roberts. A nice job. And you know what's always refreshing as a former wide receiver, and I know Coach Don Beebe has stressed this and taught this to no extent, is when you watch the wide receivers catch the ball with their hands instead of using their bodies. I always like to, uh, I tell people, God gave you 10 good reasons to catch a football, and those are your fingers. Use them, and it's great to see at this level the young men that come out. Noah Roberts, only a sophomore, comes in and knows and has the confidence to catch the ball with those hands. Nice job. Ball has reached the 38 yard line of Mount Carmel. And this will be a pass wide open Roberts to Roberts. It was Grayson Roberts. He was looking for his brother Noah Roberts and he gets it down to the 18 yard line a pickup of 25. Well executed play a little brotherly love right there between Grayson and Noah and nice job. You can see under center Maddie comes back throws a lateral and then down the field to Noah Roberts from Grayson. Well executed play catches the Golden Aces off guard and now they're in the in the red zone down to the 13 yard line and Grayson Roberts, he was the quarterback at Aurora Christian before Maddie transferred in. So it was going to be Grayson Roberts who was going to run this show. Maddie transferred in his junior year. Roberts says, I'll go to receiver and be happy with it. Hard running to the seven yard line by Brian Suttle. Good mixture of run and pass up front. An excellent block up front by the left guard, Eric Motisi, number 61, opens up the gap. You can see just seal blocks right there, the center. Good job on the second level. Also, uh, guys are just bodies on bodies, helmets on helmets, and allowing the athletes in the backfield to make the plays downfield. Nice job. There is number 61, Eric Motisi. Ball at the six yard line, 10th play of the drive coming up. About three minutes to play here in the first quarter. Maddie gets rid of it through the hands maybe a bit sailing on Chad Beebe he was open out there sometimes the toughest balls to catch are the ones when you're wide open and I know Chad Beebe wishes he can have that opportunity back but that was a well thrown ball by Maddie again displaying excellent precision right in the back of the end zone putting it in a place only where his man can make that catch. I'm sure they'll hook up for many of those balls and they have throughout this season. BB comes into the game with 38 catches and eight touchdowns. All right, he missed a lot of time as we talked about earlier with those injuries last year BB with 53 catches and 900 yards. You saw him very conscious of the end line there as we take a look at Don BB as uh, he will take a timeout. He wants to make sure he gets this one right. It will be third and three from his own six yard line. We well, talked about Don Beebe, former NFL player. Everybody knows about Don Beebe and Dane and Hughes, of course, uh, <laughs> NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs. Did your did your path ever physically oh, cross with Dave? Them? Dave, why are you bringing up bad memories, Dave? <laughs> I, we were having fun so far. I should have saved it for the yeah, fourth quarter. Yeah, save right? it. I mean, Don Beebe was on the Buffalo Bills my rookie year, 
We play the only AFC championship up outside of the 60s and early 70s by the Chiefs. 1993 season, 94 AFC championship. We go to Buffalo. That man right there was on the other side of the field, and they stole the opportunity away from us to go to the Super Bowl, and I'll never forgive them. I didn't tell them that on the phone, but I won't <laughs> forgive them. I wish them luck today, both coaches luck today, but Don, you did me wrong, buddy. <laughs> I was I was going to pick my spot when I was going to set you up for that. Well, way to get it out early. We had to get it out early. Now I can settle back into my role here, and uh, and, and, and and not have any favoritism or anything. But I, I, you know, I, I'm joking, obviously. But Don Beebe was a great player. Uh, I looked at his numbers. Nine years in the NFL for three different teams. Did a great job. A great ambassador to the game. Manny to the end zone. Did he get his feet in? Yes. Touchdown, Corey Wendell. Wendell's 19th touchdown reception of the year. Manny has thrown for his 51st. It's a 12 to nothing Aurora Christian lead. And another great job by a different receiver catching the ball with his hands. Just a little fade stop route on the outside, throwing it towards the pylon. You can see a three step drop. Nice balance. Throws it right on the outside. Again, only in a place where his player can make that play. You wonder why this man has put up great numbers this season. 50 touchdowns coming into this game, all state, committed to Western Michigan. He's a passionate player, he's a great leader on offense, and he brings out the best in his receivers. After the blocked extra point on the first touchdown, Aurora Christian to go for two. And Wet works three points, or make that two points number three, Grayson Roberts. Two points come back, it's 14 nothing, Aurora Christian. That last drive, by the way, three minutes, 17 seconds, 11 plays, and 87 yards. Let's take another look at the touchdown here. Just a nice three-step drop. Good balance by Maddie, and a nice job on the route by Wendell. It does a great job. Just a fade stop route, pushes up on the cornerback, and then opens up to the outside, creates a little bit of separation, just enough from Nathaniel Wagner to get the touchdown. And here we have Maddie on the half roll. Just a nice little slant route on the inside by Grayson Roberts. Gets the two points, gets that one point back from that first touchdown. Now it's a two touchdown lead, a two full touchdown lead for the Eagles. Had a quick glance there at Wendell. There's the scoring drive for Aurora Christian. Wendell with 1,300, over 1,300 yards receiving this year. So Aurora Christian jumps on top of Mount Carmel here early and this is not what Darren Peach wanted for Mount Carmel. His team is not necessarily designed to strike quickly and come back quickly. The Golden Eagles will have it at their 33 yard line. You're exactly right Dave when you look at this offense and the makeup we knew it was going to be an exciting game. We knew it was a very contrasting styles offensively especially but you're exactly right you hit it on the head. The, the Golden Aces are not designed to be an offense that has to come back from touch, multiple touchdown leads. They're running attack, they take up the clock, they run the ball downhill, try to be very physical. It's gonna be important to see what they can do and the adjustments that they make. It's still early in this ball game. They can afford not to uh, veer off of their game plan. Speaking of beer, that's what Dallas Cook did right there. He'll take it up for a gain of about ten and a half yards, and that should be enough for a first down for Mount Carmel and Darren Beach. But he's going to run that fullback lead right down, the, right down the right side. A nice job up front. Dan Johnson, the right guard. Keegan Bogard does an excellent job opening up that crease and allow Dallas Cook to get through. Keep running the fullback, try to soften you up up the middle. Not much that time for Cook. As his coach said, you better focus on number 28. His coach says you better focus on number 28 because he can dominate. Yes, he can. And, and this is a tough situation for this Golden Aces team. With two minutes and 20 seconds left in the first quarter, down two touchdowns, but they're sticking with their game plan, running the fullback downhill, trying to dominate the line of scrimmage. Well, Carmel winners with 12 in a row. Kondo will get it. Gets a nice block out front. He Kondo is able to stay in his feet for a first down. 
Well, you can see how the loss of Condo would have been a big impact. They were able to survive a couple of games without him, but has the speed to turn the corner. And watch the block on the outside by Dan Johnson, six foot four, 260 pound senior, coming from that right guard position, pulls on the outside. One of the notes on him was how mobile he was. He displayed that right there. This entire offensive line does a lot of movement, a lot of pulling and twisting. They do an excellent job in space. After the 11 yard pickup by Condal, Cook will get the call and he will get almost five. And well, this is what Mount Carmel fans have become accustomed to this style of offense. And it's still early. Obviously, a minute 40 to play here in the first quarter. You just keep pounding away and then ask your defense to come up with a stop. However, in this first quarter, Aurora Christian has racked up 187 yards of offense. And the quick strike ability of Aurora Christian is what's really going to be able, going to be telling for the Golden Aces defensively. Handel very close to a first down. You can see Condal just running another jet sweep, just riding him through, trying to open up things up the middle so the fullback has more of a crease. Brandon Mays makes the tackle just short of the first down but the mobility of the offensive line again that young man right there Dan Johnson out in space does a great job of getting his body between the runner and the tackle third in the yard why not to the fullback hook that'll move the chains you talked about the last play Dane in the jet sweep now Darren Peach has been in his 11th year here at Mount Carmel of course he has his offensive philosophies but he put the jet sweep in this season. So obviously, you have your offense philosophies, but you see your personnel and what you can do with it. Exactly, and that's the that's the tide of a, of a of a true coach, a true a very good coach, is to be able to make the adjustments to his players, not necessarily try to fit his players into a certain box. But shows the athleticism. He knows Condal can be good in space and has the speed to turn the corner, and he's able to utilize that in this offense. Here we go. All of a sudden, the gains coming in chunks of five yards, five yards, throwing a ten-yarder. Mount Carmel moving the ball here in the final seconds of the first quarter. And their offensive approach, because they run the ball downhill, is not going to be phased by the wind or the elements. They, they're going to run the ball downhill and try to dominate the line of scrimmage. See if they get this snap off, they do. Looking to turn the corner, step on to the five yard line is Nathaniel Wagner. 22 yards, it will be first and goal. Golden Aces. A 14 0 lead for Aurora Christian on an Anthony Manny 72 yard run and a six yard touchdown pass. But now it's Nathaniel Wagner. He puts Mount Carmel in scoring territory down at the five as we go to quarter number two. After gaining only 20 yards on their first three drives, Mount Carmel 61 yards on this drive alone, and they've taken it down to the Aurora Christian five as we start the second quarter. Cook, though, will go nowhere. Brandon Mays, number one on the stop. He also gets helped by number 34, Kenny McCracken, as we take a look at our first quarter stats, skewed total yardage-wise to the advantage of Aurora Christian. That's a big first quarter, 187 yards. Huge numbers there, and you can see the balanced nature of the pass and running attack of the Eagles. And then on the other side, most of these rushing yards have come in this drive for the Golden Aces. So they're going to have to capitalize in this situation inside the red zone to be able to get back in this ball game. Cook again. This time he is hit low. Julian Sosa, number 55, the first hit. It will be third and goal from the three. Textbook tackle by number 55. Julian Sosa's done a nice job defensively. You can see him scraping right over into that A gap, drops his shoulder, stuffs the running back, and pushes him back. And that's what you want to see from your defense. Great running backs know how to fall forward and have a knack of falling forward. But when you have a textbook tackle like Sosa, they have no chance but to go backwards. Hannah trouble with the snap, and it will be fourth and goal. Sheldon Hanna couldn't get it cleanly, 6'2 senior. See, he double clutches the snap right there, doesn't get the grip on it. He's looking to run the fullback downhill. 
and comes through is Nick Larson, the defensive tackle, five foot 10, 221 pound junior, makes the stop, creates fourth down. There's Larson. He's ready to dig in once again. A first and goal from the five has become a fourth down and goal from the five. Motion Wagner. Wagner will cut it up. He won't get there. The Aurora Christian defense comes up huge. Comes up huge with the small guy in the back end, Brandon Mays, 165 pound junior, comes into the game with 101 tackles and seven interceptions and makes a huge play for the Eagles right here. You can see him scraping from the end zone, sees a window, takes his shot, and stops the runner dead in his tracks. First down, Eagles. Once again, Aurora Christian starting from their three yard line. They lead it 14 to nothing. Third straight possession at Aurora Christian starting inside the 20. They won't be there for long. To the outside is Suttle. Brought down at the 35. 32 yards on the run for Ryan Suttle. Excellent, excellent job by Ryan Suttle, the running back. He comes in, just a nice little draw, trying to create space off the end line. It does, as you can see, the cut right there. Good at yards after contact and the speed in the open field. A nice job by Sean Hindeleiter from the nose tackle position, tracking down Suttle, but not after the huge game. Well, we see why Don Beebe is so proud of his running game. It's come to play here tonight, mixes very nicely with that passing game and that 32 yard run by Suttle gives the Eagles breathing room here if we play about two and a half minutes into our second quarter. So many weapons on the Eagles side offensively. Almost impossible to guard every one of them. Good coverage downfield. They were looking for Wendell Wagner and Wendell. That's a battle we've seen all night. Wagner does come through. He's done a nice job on the outside, especially against the deep routes that they've tried to run. But that go, that play right there is a perfect example of my point earlier, Dave. Throwing with the wind, you're seeing that ball sail just a little bit more in the deep routes with the wind to their back. There's Nathaniel Wagner, one of five players that will go both ways for Mount Carmel. Quickly, they get it to Grayson Roberts. Not much yardage. He was forced out of bounds. He'll get about two yards on the play is all. It'll be third down and eight. Each of these receivers and running backs for the Eagles do a very nice job in yards after contact. Everyone always talks about the yaks, the yards after catches by wide receivers. That comes into play, but what's even more important, especially with the run game, is the yards after the first contact. Shedding that first tackle, Aurora Christian, 220 yards total in this game, and we're just, just in the beginning part of the second quarter. They're looking for eight more right here. They will have it. You talk him fellow that catches with his hands, with his fingertips, uses all 10. That's Wendell. 12 Excellent. yards and a first down. Excellent job. Just a nice hook route on the outside. You see Wendell lines up about one or two yards away from the end sideline just so that it's a one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Safety doesn't come into play until after the catch. Clayton Cole from the outside linebacker position makes that tackle, but another great job of catching the ball with his hands, making the plays, and moving the chains. You mentioned Clayton Cole, his older brother, Scotty. He's an all-stater in Mount Carmel in 2006. Scotty Cole, now an inside linebacker at Southern Illinois University. Four catches now for 40 yards for Corey Window in that Touchdown as we have a timeout on the field. It comes with 909 to play here in the first half. And it's a 14 to nothing. Aurora Christian lead over Mount Carmel. The Eagles very happy with what they see right now. A 14 to nothing lead. They have a first down in midfield. Mays will come through in motion. Maddie will look for a hole. First down and more. Anthony Maddie for 16 yards to the 34. And another nice tackle downfield by Sean Hindeleiter, the nose guard, number one. 
But watch how this play develops. You see Brandon Mays comes in motion and then is a lead blocker down the hole. So between Subtle and Mays is actually two fullbacks, so to speak, that are leading Maddie up through the hole, creating that crease and moving the chains for another big game for the Eagles. We saw number 22 for Mount Carmel, Sam Wampler, double team backpedaling all the way and another drive here, another long drive for Aurora Christian. He's taking it to the 34. Mays a couple of yards on first down. Sheldon Hanna, the quarterback, is playing safety as well, comes up and helps with that tackle. But I say, when you're looking at this defense and the battles in between the battle, Dave, I noticed Sean Hindeleiter at the nose guard position against number 75, Ryan Zawinski. Head to head, right on top of each other. A little, everyone else is a little bit more spread out because of the nature of the offense, but those two young men in the middle are really having a nice little battle. And he's able to step up this one a little bit low as he was looking for subtle out of the backfield. This is an Aurora Christian team that is really battled some adversity, especially here in the playoffs. Of course, they rolled through with an 8-1 record in the regular season, but once the playoffs hit, so did the injury bug. They lost R.J. Morris, a two-way lineman in the first round playoff game, and then linebacker Mitch Holtz went out with an ACL injury just like Morris. He was a stud linebacker. He went out with an ACL injury in the second round, so playing without two of their very best linemen and linebackers, and yet here they are, 12-1 and in a 14-0 lead in the second quarter of the 3A championship game. And when you talk about the very best, R.J. Morris was actually an all-state player, so not just the very best for, the, for this team, but also for throughout the entire state of Illinois. Grayson Roberts thought he had that reception. We'll take a look. The eye in the sky doesn't lie, Grayson. Let's see if you made this nice little route. Good to push at the end. Oh, looked like it bounced a little bit on the side. He got his hand on it. You can see better from this angle. Gets the right hand in there. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. These are multiple angles you can see right here. Oh, uh, yeah, a little bounce okay. at the end. Good call. It's fourth down and eight now. All wide receivers think they catch everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never dropped one, did no, you? No, no. All right. It was always the ball's fault. <laughs> Aurora Christian will use their final time out here on a fourth down and eight. 7.28 to play here in the first half. Well, conventionally speaking, these are three relatively quick timeouts that Don Beebe and the Aurora Christian Eagles have used in this first half. But I like the usage of them, and here's why. They're trying to make sure that they do exactly the right thing offensively. They use all three timeouts on the offensive side, knowing the nature of the, the offense that they're going against when they're on defense. That offense is going to take up a lot of time and a lot of the clock. There's no need to utilize it then. It was R.J. Morris who was injured in that Kiwani game. Then it was the first series of the Oregon game that Mitch Holtz went out. We saw that score of the Unity game, 50 to 46. Aurora Christian scored 43 points in the second half. Anthony Maddie accounting for five touchdowns, four in the air, one rushing. In fact, Maddie through the playoffs, take a look at his passing and rushing touchdowns, four in the first round, five each in the next three. Aaron Peach looks on. He has those three timeouts remaining. He just needs to get that ball right now. Fourth down and eight. Looking for more than eight. Grayson Roberts unable to hang on, and Mount Carmel will get it back. Big defensive stop there for the Golden Aces. Huge for the Golden Aces right there. They needed to get the stop. They have to be able to capitalize with 7.22 left in this first half. You can see he rolls to his left, throws it across his body to the post route on the outside, threads the needle with a nice strong throw, a little bit high and in traffic for Grayson to come down with. But that just shows you the strength of the arm of Anthony Maddie. This young man has a bright future, very passionate for this team, a passionate leader. Great to watch. Close to a first down. 
That time it was Hannah that kept it on the option. I remember the last time that Mount Carmel had the ball, they were able to mar march it all the way down to the field Well, they were stopped at the five yard line. Well, this is a nice job. They're running the, the option on the outside. And you can see just that hesitation right at the last second allows them to look, crease to get to that first down marker, move the chains. But a nice job by Sheldon Hanna on the outside. This Golden Aces offense has been two different offenses. When they run the ball up the middle, they really haven't fared and gotten the big gains as well as they've done on the outside between Nathaniel Wagner and Sheldon Hanna. Running on the outside seems to be the weakness for this Eagles defense right now. Dallas Cook will get seven yards, came into this game with 1,410 yards, 24 touchdowns. It's a very calm 11th year head coach, Darren Peach. This team has it in midfield. To the outside. Good, strong running by Pete Condal. That will be another first down. Nice job on the outside again. Taking advantage of what the defense is giving. You can see again Dan Johnson moving on the outside. This shields a blocker. Dylan Farmer, a great blocker at the tight end position, is also out there in space. Opening up gaps, allowing him to move the chains. Nice Nine, job up front. Nine-yard run by Condal. We get the sense here as we hit the midway point the second quarter this is a drive that Mount Carmel must score on Cook gets a hole and again here come those five six seven yard runs just like the Golden Aces did the last time they had the ball getting yards in chunks and it's like we talked about over and over and I'm sure we'll go through it in the second half these two offensive uh, uh, game plans are totally different. How they approach the game, the grind and running attack, being trying to be physical at the point of attack by the Golden Aces. Maybe a little bit more finesse. I know that Coach Don Beebe doesn't want to hear that. A little bit more finesse from the Eagles offense. And another nice gain in the running attack again on the outside. Nice job by Nathaniel Wagner there, creating third and about one yard. Well, what's happened on the last two possessions from Mount Carmel, they've done well on first down. They've been able to set up the second and manageable now here, third and a yard. Sheldon Hannon will bring them up. You get a good look at Dallas Cook. Everybody in tight. Cook over the top to the 30 and a first down. Yeah, That's the fullback dive right here over the left side. Running over Dan Johnson again, who lined up on the left side at the left guard position. Dalton Peach is the other guard, the head coach's son. Uh, a smaller uh, position at that guard, a 5'8", 175, the junior, amongst everyone else on that line as seniors. Before the snap, we get a whistle. We get a timeout called by Mount Carmel. We've hit the four and a half minute mark here in the second quarter. Early touchdowns, a run by Maddie, a pass by Maddie. The Eagles, a 14 nothing lead. First down from the 30 yard line for Mount Carmel. We'll look for points here in the closing minutes of the first half. Wagner gets a block out front. Nice cutback. It's a 10 yard run to the 20. Nice job right there by the Golden Aces. You can see they've run the jet sweep. They fake the jet sweep and run the reverse to Nathaniel Wagner. Dan Johnson out there in the mix again. Great in the open field. Kyle Smith, the center, also downfield. Really doing a nice job. And I think when you, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, Dave. But the, the game plan for the second half and what these teams are going to look at as far as their success in the first half. Yes, they've been able to get two and three yards, and Dallas Cook has done a nice job up the middle, but they've, they've earned their money on the outside. They're going to have to try to attack the corners better uh, against this Eagles defense. Dallas Cook Five yards for Cook on first down. It's been familiar territory here from Mount Carmel. Last time they were here, they had a first and goal from the five. 
Got it to the three, a couple of plays, took it back to the five, and that's where the drive ended. The question mark always comes up about the team that does well running the ball. How come they can go from the 20 to the 20 and do a nice job running the ball? But people don't realize, once you get inside the 20, the defense is closer to the line of scrimmage. You have a less chance of running the ball. Things get a little bit more tight. Pride comes into play, and that's where the Eagles have been able to fare well the last time they had their backs against the goal line. The carry was by a freshman, Levi Laws, 5'11", 160-pounder. He's rushed the ball 30 times coming into this game for 229 yards, a 7.6-yard average. So Laws, Cook, and Wampler, that's a three-headed monster there at that fullback position. That takes it down to the 12, and it's third and a long two yards for a first down. Laws is also, like you said, a freshman starting at the safety position on defense as well, so getting a lot of experience in this first year. Looking for two yards. Well, he got about one. It will be another keep fourth down here inside the 15-yard line. Nice job gang tackling led by Kenny McCracken from the linebacker position. Nick Larson was also involved in that. Josh Cook as well. They'll spot it at the 11, so it will be fourth and a yard. 14 to nothing, Aurora Christian. Mount Carmel looking to cut that into in half. They need three feet to do it. Sheldon Hanna will bring his team to the line. To the near side, first down. First and goal inside the five. Condal the carry. Seven yards on a fourth down run. Running to the wide side of the field, getting out in space, and another nice job. And watch Dan Johnson come downfield. You can see the movement by the offensive line. Good blocking downfield. Nathaniel Wagner, wide receivers coming into play. Also, but Dylan Farmer, the tight end. Exactly what you want to see. If you're Darren Peach, you want to be able to look at your offensive line and tight end and know that they were owning the, the line of scrimmage at a crucial point in this game. Wagner has the ball go through his hands, but he's got some room out there. Close quickly. A break for Mount Carmel. That ball came back to Nathaniel Wagner. He got a lucky bounce right there. It could have been very costly for the Golden Aces offense. You can see the pitch is just a little bit behind him. Not timed well from the snap, but a nice job of tracking the ball down. And Ryan McQuay, the linebacker, Don Beebe's nephew comes into play and makes the tackle for the loss. Back to the eight yard line, a loss of four, second and goal from there. So the field opens up a little bit here. Mount Carmel taking a lot of time. They may need to take a timeout here. Play clock down to three, and they will take timeout. They want to wind this clock down with a minute 23. They don't want to put the ball back into Aurora Christian's hands here in the final moments of this half. Absolutely not. You want to keep Anthony Maddie off the field as much as possible, allow, not allowing him to utilize the win to his advantage. But more importantly, this timeout's utilized because they have to get a touchdown. They can't settle to try for a field goal. As, as much as the offense has been swayed and, and the dominance factor has come into play for the Eagles in this first half, if the Golden Aces score a touchdown here, it creates a whole new ball game going into halftime, halftime only down by seven points. You know, a lot of coaches say every play we draw up and call is designed to go for a touchdown. Yes. <laughs> but in this situation, second and eight, uh, are they looking for eight yards right now? Are they going to be happy to get half of that now and play third and four? I think they, they're looking to get in the end zone as quickly as possible. And the reason why I say that is because they've eclipsed the red zone earlier this ball game and didn't come away with any points. So I don't think they're trying to set up anything. They only have one timeout left. You can, you can say that this play right here can take upwards of about 45 seconds in itself. So it's very crucial. I can see, I can anticipate them running a jet sweep to the wide side of the field. Pete Condo is lined up on the, the far wing, try to utilize that speed, and actually they run to the boundary. That's to Wagner, so that was the short side of yeah. the field for a gain of a couple. And I understand the thought process, trying to catch it off, catch the Eagles off guard. They've run to the field multiple times and have fared well. 
Uh, they've gotten their big gains by running to the field and not to the boundary. We're going to have to mix it up on this play right here coming from about the six and a half yard line. Clock under a minute to play here in the first half. Third and goal. All of a sudden, Mount Carmel trying to pile up the yards on the ground. Hannah. No score. It's a completed pass. But you can thank number seven, Ryan McQuaid, junior linebacker, for shutting that one down. McQuaid, Don Beebe's nephew, that plays on this team. Yes, he is, and does a nice job. Another athletic young man, six foot four, 191 pounds. You can see he does a nice job of closing, has great closing speed to make that tackle. At 48 tackles coming into this ball game, two interceptions, six tackles for losses. And it looks like the uh, Golden Aces are going to utilize their last timeout. Do or die right here. Well, they've been here before. Reach into that playbook. Ball is on the right hash this time. When you look at the setup of the, the defense for the Eagles, Dave, one thing I notice is that when uh, they're on the far, far hash, the Golden Aces on offense are on the far hash. In that situation, whether they run the jet sweep with Condal or Wagner or Sheldon Hanna in that last play rolling to his right, the defense, that 3-4 defense, the Eagles, tends to flow very strongly to that open field leaves them susceptible to maybe a throwback pass or the reverse that they had going on earlier in the ball game as well. Try to get that very over aggressive defense to flow one direction and then try to come back real quick with either a reverse or a throwback to that open field. Earlier in this quarter, Mount Carmel's right here at the five yard line. This is what happened earlier on fourth down and goal from the five yard line. Nathaniel Wagner stopped on that play. Nice job by Brandon Mays, and again, they ran that to the tight side of the field, and that's why they couldn't get that big enough game to get into the touchdown. 15th play of this drive will result in a score. Hannah. Uh-oh, it will not happen. Once again, the defense for Aurora Christian comes up big. Kondo well covered. The ball will go over on downs. Well, we talked about this young man playing offense, what he's done at the quarterback position. He comes in on defense and makes a huge stop in the open field. And you can see Mays comes in on the blitz. Nice job by Hannah, avoiding the tackle. And then here comes number nine, Anthony Maddie. Change things around. Again, second time inside the 10 yard line and the Golden Aces come away with nothing. Third time in this game that Aurora Christian started their own three yard line. Now granted, just eight seconds left. Maddie very safely will take that knee. How about Mount Carmel? Their previous drive, 12 plays resulted in no points. This drive, 15 plays, no points. They will leave the field trailing 14 to nothing. And the way this game started, Dave, you wondered if the Golden Aces were going to be able to get things on track offensively. They did. They were very successful in those two drives. The last two drives they had the ball, they moved the ball very well. 27 total plays, but no points on the board. That's the crucial factor that comes into play because we talked about it earlier. The Golden Aces is not designed to come from behind, and they cannot leave the field or leave points on the field like they did in this first half. Speaking of points, that's what Aurora Christian did earlier. Maddie touchdown run, and Anthony Maddie touchdown pass. Those 14 points standing up right now. The Eagles happy. Number nine, he's a happy guy. They're halfway to their first state championship in school history. We're at halftime of the Class 3A state championship game. Aurora Christian with a 14-0 lead over Mount Carmel. Aurora Christian coach Don Beebe with me now. And coach, your offense gets a lot of the credit, but how about that defense? A couple of huge goal line stops for you guys. Well, it's been that way all year. Um, our offense does get a lot of credit because of Anthony Maddie and our skilled kids. Uh, but reality, why you win big games with defense. And right now our defense is playing really well. Offensively, what can you do to maybe open things up even a little bit more for you guys? Well, we got to keep putting the ball in Anthony Maddie's hands. Uh, I mean, he's that special of a player. 
uh, I think we got to be a little bit more conservative. Um, but we'll see how the second half goes. But we just cannot turn the ball over. That all, that's all I know. Coach, thanks a lot. All Good right. luck in the Thank second you, half. Coach. Thank you. Aurora Christian head coach Don Beebe, his team leads 14-0. You are watching the IHSA State Finals on the IHSA Television Network. Welcome back to the Class 3A State Football Championships. We're at halftime. Aurora Christian with a 14-0 lead over Mount Carmel. And this is the third game of the day. We've already had two fantastic state championship games. Two state titles already been crowned. We start in 1A. It was Tuscola against Dakota. And the story of this game was Jake Apple, the running back for the Indians, ran for nearly 400 yards and four touchdowns. Nearly 400 yards is a state championship record among all classes. He's running with a separated shoulder. Head coach Jerry Lano said he may be the toughest player he's ever coached in 23 years there. He really took the spirit out of this Tuscola team as Dakota wins the state championship in class 1A, 41-27. And then in class 2A, the game we just finished watching Morrison beat Casey Westfield 23-14. The Mustangs bring home another state championship. This game was close throughout the first half. It was tied 14-14 at the break, but a big uh, momentum shift uh, series in the fourth quarter with the game tied. Morrison scores a touchdown to go up 20-14 to as they kind of inch ahead of Casey Westfield there. And then the Warriors with a chance to get back in this one. A long ball would look like it could have been a touchdown, but the receiver just couldn't handle the pass. And then that would prove costly because later in the drive, Morrison would come up with a big interception and they would tack on a field goal to ice this game as the Morrison Mustangs are your 2A state champ for the 23-14 win over the KZ Westfield Warriors. Let's send things right back up to the booth for a look at the 3A highlights. Danon Hughes and Dave Bernhard, guys. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. And we hope you folks that enjoyed that 2A game didn't step out outside too long between games because you miss things happening very quickly. Let's take a look at those highlights. Just 22 seconds into this ball game, the quarterback for Aurora Christian, Anthony Maddy, one step to the left, several steps downfield, 72 yards later, Aurora Christian has the 6-0 lead, as we said, just 22 seconds into the game. The extra point was blocked, so the score remained 6-0, Eagles. Very next possession, Maddy to the air. He finds Corey Wendell from seven yards out. This time the two-point conversion is good. 14-0 lead, and this is Mount Carmel. Fourth down and goal from the five-yard line. Turned away, number one, Brandon Mays, doing the damage on that particular play. Once again, fourth and goal from the five. Anthony Maddy, he's there, yes he is, on defense. And with that, it takes us to our 14 to nothing lead for Aurora Christian. The statistics as we take a look at them, Dana, have evened out a little bit. Obviously, they still advantage Aurora Christian. Well, I think what you saw was the last two drives by the Golden Aces, they were able to come through with very big or long drives, 27 plays totally, and 144 yards on the ground helps. But again, no points. They're getting first downs, they're getting better as the game moves on, but no points. Well, we saw a time of possession, 18 minutes, and I guess that doesn't mean anything when he can't put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. And you, when you look at the contrasting styles of this team, you have to wonder if this Golden Aces team is going to be a little bit dejected at this point, knowing that they had two opportunities to possibly tie this ball game and create a whole new ball game in the second half. They're struggling, covering, and, and dealing with Anthony Maddy at the quarterback position, both run and pass. The receivers for the Eagles are doing an excellent job catching the ball downfield. And now defensively, they're making the stop when their backs are up against the wall. Uh, you know what, I, I, Don Beebe does a great job offensively for this team. He has his mindset and what he brought as a player uh, resonating amongst his team. But the telling tale is anytime you see a wide receiver or an offensive-minded guy talk about defense being the key to the ball game, you know there's something special going on. He recognizes that his defense is stepping up and playing championship quality football. Take a look at what's coming up. Yes, we're only... Uh, Halfway through, a little more than halfway through here on day number one. Of course, we're at the half, 14-0, Aurora Christian over Mount Carmel. Immediately following this game, you're not going to want to miss the 4A game, Richmond, Burton, and Rochester. You think we have a contrast in styles in this game. Hang on for that 7 o'clock kickoff. Of course, four games coming up tomorrow. 
Okay, so now Mount Carmel, you talk about Don Beebe, and you know, you talk about his defense. What's Darren Peach have to talk about in the locker room? Well, you talk about a demoralized offense. They dominate time of possession. They run the ball yeah. the way they're supposed to, and yet they can't score. Well, I think that's what he's going to have to look at. He's going to say, hey, guys, we're winning at the point of contact. We're winning at the line of scrimmage. We're doing better. Each quarter, they've gotten better. We talked about the two touchdowns that the Eagles scored. Those are the first two drives of the game. They haven't really done much since then. That's a win for the Golden uh, for the golden Aces. That's what Darren Peach has to preach in the locker room right now. Hey, we've gotten better. Now we have to score points. We have to get yards in chunks. The clock is going to be a little bit against them because Don Beebe talked about, we're going to be a little bit more conservative in the second half. We're going to run the clock down, make them try to do things outside of their elements and getting yards in chunks, and that might throw them the ball game with by way of turnovers. And Mount Carmel will get the ball first in the kickoff when we start the second half. That 14 points right there belongs to the Eagles from Aurora Christian. There's a zero on the other side for Mount Carmel. We're at the half in your 3A championship game. 14 zip. Welcome back to the IHSA Football State Championships here at Memorial Stadium. These are brought to you by Country Financial. And we've watched Anthony Maddy and Aurora Christian run all over this field. And I am joined now by Mount Carmel head coach Darren Peach. Coach, your team is doing all the right things. You're controlling the clock. You're creating long, sustained drives. But 0 for 2 inside the red zone on those two fourth and goals. How do you get those scoring opportunities back? You know, like, like you said, we just got to do a better job of, uh, you know, we're getting a red zone uh, of sticking the ball in the end zone. Uh, you know, we, we've been great, uh, you know, outside of the red zone. Uh, you know, we just got to finish, finish, finish the drive off. Dallas Cook, he's having um, some luck inside, getting some short runs, but also having some luck getting outside. Where are you going to send him in this second half to get more production? Well, you know, it just depends what, where, uh, you know, how they're lining up defensively, whether they're in, uh, you know, their three-man front or whether they're in a goal line front. It uh, depends on where, where we'll be going at. Defensively, Anthony Maddie, how do you control him in the second half to get your team back in this thing? You know, he, he's a great football player. You know, uh, hopefully this wind keeps blowing out, out there and, uh, you know, defense starts making some plays out, out there against him. He's a great quarterback. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. We will be back with the second half of our Class 3A state championship game, Mount Carmel trailing 14-0. Aurora Christian along their near sideline leading at 14 and nothing thanks to a couple of quick early touchdowns. First one 22 seconds in, the next one came with three minutes left in the first quarter. We spotlighted Anthony Matty for Aurora Christian in our pregame along with Dallas Cook. Let's take a look at how they have done here in the first half. Well, Anthony Matty, here's 72 yards, part of his 99 yards. This is on the third play of the game, just 22 seconds into the game. And Matty made it his impact felt very early. Well, they knew what they were in store for with him, and this young man is a great athlete, has shown his athleticism, both offensively running the ball, throwing the ball with the second touchdown of the game to Corey Windall, and then on defense, he's come through. Brandon Mays has been uh, in the right place at the right time defensively as well. So this team is playing well in all three phases of the game right now, putting a lot of pressure on, Shaft, on Hannah, Sheldon Hannah at the quarterback position, and two key stops with their backs to the end line inside that gold zone. 3,706 yards passing for Anthony Maddy coming into this game tonight. Six of 15 for 59 yards, so numbers that are a little bit below. On the other side, Dallas Cook has run for 55 yards. That's a pretty good night. However, you see the touchdown, zero. That's the key number in this game. Well, you know what? They've they've been they fared well, especially in the second quarter. Offensively, Dallas Cook has come through with some nice grounding grinding uh, running plays down the middle, but they've really worked well when they've gotten to the edge with Nathaniel Wagner and Pete Condo. That's what they're going to have to do in the second half. Loosen things up, utilize Dallas Cook off the tackles or inside the tackles, and then come back and balance it out with Condo and Wagner on the outside. But they have to score touchdowns when they get opportunities. They haven't done that so far. Aurora Christian looking to become the first school from the city of Aurora to win a state football championship. Mount Carmel, they are crazy about their football in southeast Illinois. They were champs in 1981, but then second place finishes in 1974. And then in that man's first two years, Darren Peach's first two years in 2001, 2002, finished second both times to Driscoll. That first one in 2001, one of the most memorable games played in the state championships, a double overtime loss to Driscoll. And Darren Peach said, you know what? After that second touchdown, 
in that second overtime. I'm going to go for two points. They didn't get it. He's fine with the decision here 10 years later, and why not? It was a gutsy call, and he gets a chance to play for a title again tonight. Oftentimes you see coaches, they always want to second-guess themselves and, and look back, but in our conversations with Coach Peach, he still to this day really rests well that he made the right decision and they just could not execute. Pretty good pick here by Sosa. Keeper only to the 24-yard line. Good tackle after a return of 20. So let's see how Mark Carmel will approach it. They dominate a time of possession. They rushed for 127 yards in that second quarter, part of their 147 for the game. Take a look at what the Golden Aces have done. How about that? 27 plays in their final two possessions and still nothing. Yeah, and you know what? Just the fact that they haven't really fared well passing the ball just shows that they've been able to loosen things up at the point of contact. Three yards on first down. Well, we saw Darren Peach yeah, talking to here. Sophia a little while ago. How about Darren Peach and his assistant coach, offensive Three line coach, Tim seven, Bogart? Seven, Both of those seven, two seven, coaches seven. have adopted Chinese daughters. Both of them are now four. Gabby Peach, four years old, Ava Bogard. Peach in 2007, he traveled to China to adopt Gabby. And Dylan Farmer, a connection with this too. Dylan Farmer, the All-Stater, he has adopted sisters from China and Taiwan. Tell you what, there's nothing more special than to see people in general giving of themselves and their family, opening the doors for other less fortunate children. And uh, that's just a testament to the type of person that Coach Peach is and his family, as well as the other families that have done the same so uh, this young this coach and you know people underestimate the impact of coaches they all they look at what's happening on the field the wins and losses he must be a great coach because they're 12 and 1 but then when you see a person like that you notice that not only is he a good coach but he's also a quality person it's a third down and seven for Mount Carmel opening drive Hannah to the air a little bit overthrown he was looking for Condal, Mays would have none of it. Brandon Mays on the coverage for the Eagles. So after 27 plays, the last two possessions, it's three and out for Mount Carmel. And here they're trying to run the jet sweep. They fake the jet sweep. Only a two wide receiver pass route. And you can see multiple Eagles in the backfield. It's just very tough when you run that compact offense, when all 11 of your guys or 10 of your 11 guys are inside the inside. You don't have many opportunities to get multiple wide receivers downfield. Ball comes back a little bit. Good field position for Aurora Christian after just a 25 yard punt against a 20 mile an hour win. We'll see Aurora Christian take the field and we'll see how the offensive philosophy changes the, the going more conservative approach that we heard Don Beebe uh, tell Aaron Bennett as he came off the field here before half. Well what you're going to see uh, what I anticipate you see Dave is that they're going to run the ball a little bit more but more importantly they took multiple times or multiple shots downfield for deep throws. I anticipate that they'll probably run more of your five or six yard stop routes catch the ball try to break tackles but keep the clock moving. They have that field spread. And that's pretty conservative and pretty effective Maddie. 35 30 Maddie inside the 25 to the 23 yard line Anthony Maddie 28 yards. Excellent job of blocking up front wide receivers downfield. Don Beebe said he wanted to get the ball in his playmakers hands as often and a nice job Ryan Suttle on the block. And then you can see a block downfield and nice job not only trying to break tackles downfield by Maddie, but how about knowing to stay in bounds, keep the clock moving. I know it's early in the third quarter, but every second counts instead of running out of bounds. He does a nice job of cutting across the grain, keeping the clock moving, getting more yards after contact. Anthony Maddie headed to Western Michigan University and his coach Don Beebe says he has a division one arm and legs. Brandon Mays bounces off a tackle inside the 10 first and goal 15 yard run for Mays here come the Eagles just a nice little delay draw drop back nice job you can see the blocking up front a huge hole yards after contact we talked about Brandon Mays playing bigger than his body style 5'11 165 rumbling through there like the big fullback for the huge gain first and goal inside the 10. 
twice Mount Carmel was turned away in this spot one other time Aurora Christian was here they scored a touchdown they're looking to push this 14 to nothing lead a bit higher Suttle is in the backfield with Maddie and he is hammered down Anthony Maddie never saw number 42 Clayton Cole that will be a loss of seven Clayton Cole comes scot free off the left side of the defensive line and you can see Maddie is looking to his left the entire time has no idea and that's a nice job it could have been a turnover right there he holds on to the ball but Clayton Cole comes through with his 12th sack of the season six feet three inches tall 220 pounds with speed second and goal from the 15. The Eagles have spread the field. Manny looking to create. Will he do it this feet? With his arm, finds his man. Wendell can't hang on. There was excitement from sideline to sideline on that play. I think what you see here is the athleticism of Anthony Maddie and then his arm strength throwing across his body against the grain and you know Corey Wendell has great hands we've seen that displayed in this game and throughout the season I think he's probably in awe that he got the ball that uh, that play unfolded from one side to the other side and it came back to him lost a little bit of concentration there and it's third and goal from the 15. Play action. Matty, the ball deflected and intercepted. Somebody got a piece of that ball. The interception will go to Levi Law as the freshman. So what was a first and goal inside the 10 for Aurora Christian is turned back. Red zone defense has been key for the Eagles, and now you can see it comes through right there. Dallas Cook, the fullback linebacker, comes through, not deflects the ball, and Levon Laws is at the right place, the right time for the turnover. Mount Carmel to start this from their own five-yard line. Do they take advantage of the turnover here? It's the one thing that Don Beebe did not want, and they are stymied at their own five. For Anthony Maddie, that's his 15th interception of the season to go along with 51 touchdown passes. Josh Cook and Nick Larson, the defensive end, defensive tackle on the right side of the defense come through with that huge stop right there. This defense is a 3-4, kind of a hybrid 3-5 defense depending on the teams that they're facing. And you can see they're stacking the box, recognizing the running attack of the Golden Aces. Wagner with the blocker ahead of him. He'll be close to the first down. A nine yard pickup on second down. Another big play on the edge, working the outside, utilizing the mobility of the offensive line. Dan Johnson, Dalton Peach at that guard position, Seth Shalaski, the tackle, six foot, 275 pound senior. Each of those guys doing a very nice job, doing a much better job in space than they are in the trenches at the point of attack. Third and a yard here from Mount Carmel. Up and over, where will the spot of the ball be? Enough for a first down. On the carry that time, number 22, Sam Wampler. Wampler just gets up in the air right there, and that's a nice job of going low on goal line and short yardage situations. You want your defensive lineman to go low and stop everything at that point of contact. Eagles do that, but not before Wampler is able to leap over and get the first down. 52, Nick Larson digs in. And of the option pitch. Wagner takes a hit and flicks one of his own. Another nine yards, almost 10 for Wampler. He may have that first down. Running the option to the right side to the wide field again. The big plays for this Golden Aces team have come from the wide side. You can see a nice job by Cody Slaymans at the cornerback position coming up and making the stop. 
just about at 10 yards, but not before the Golden Aces get that first down. It's now 55 yards and eight carries for Nathaniel Wagner. Mount Carmel taking this out from her own five. Hanno looking for someone and never came. The white jerseys were there, and that play had problems from the beginning. Josh Cook comes in, playing inside right there at the defensive end position. Recognizes a little miscommunication in the backfield for the Golden Aces. Cook comes in and makes the stop. Two yard loss. I believe that may have been Wagner that was split out wide left. You saw Hannah with the one foot stomp to try to get his white out in motion, then the other one, and it never developed. Josh Cook, big 245 pounder. Second and long. Hannah to keep. And now, Mount Carmel, where they do not want to be, a third down and long. We we'll need nine yards here for a first down. We passed the midpoint of the third quarter. We talked about number 75, Roman Zorinski, at the center position in his battles. Offensively, he comes through at that linebacker position, filling in what we talked about earlier, Mitch Holtz. Had his ACL injury this season, is out, had 104 tackles. Zawinski is playing that linebacker position. The senior is doing a nice job there as well. Hannah needs to throw. Locks it in the air. A catch is made. Oh, what a grab by Nathaniel Wagner. Somehow, Wagner is able to catch up to that 29 yards. First down, take a look. Unbelievable catch. Just a half roll to his left, and Hannah comes back, throws the ball in open space. And you see the burst of speed by Nathaniel Wagner catches the ball just as it's about to touch the ground, gets it at his lowest point, the back end of the ball for an outstanding catch for a first down. Huge play for Mount Carmel, the ball in Aurora Christian territory at the Eagles 46 yard line. Hannah now three of six in the air for 33 yards. The pitch to Condal. And the speed of Aurora Christian slams that door in a hurry. Number 32 there is Ryan Suttle. Also helping out number seven, Ryan McQuaid. And only a couple of yards here on first down. Now remember, Mount Carmel comes into this game averaging 40 points per ball game. They're only lost this year. It's their lowest scoring game of the year. That was in the first week. They lost 26-15 to Harrisburg. They've won 12 in a row. This will be the ninth play of this drive from Mount Carmel, a drive that started at their own five. Try to pound it up the middle. They'll be faced with a third and about five. Wampler with the carry that time, and whether it's Wampler or Cook, yards have been tough to come by the middle here against this defense. Well, you can tell exactly what the Eagles had practiced and game plan defensively for is working the middle of the field, making sure inside the box, inside that tackle box was pretty stout against the run, forcing the Golden Aces to beat them either in the air or on the perimeter. Hannah, the option to Cook. That took a long time to develop, and when you have the speed of the Aurora Christian defense, that is not a good thing for Mount Carmel fans. Well, nice job. The initial hit was made by number 32, the running back, and now playing in defensive back. Also, Ryan Suttle, and then Brandon Mays comes through and cleans things up at the sideline for a fourth down and six. Another, another long-lasting drive, extended drive by the Golden Aces, but they keep putting themselves in these third and long or fourth and long situations, having to come through with a huge play to keep the drive going, but not getting any points on the board. Looking for six yards. Hannah has it picked up by Mays. Brandon Mays to the 40, speed to the sideline. Hannah will bring him down. Interception return of 31 yards by Brandon Mays. The Mount Carmel drive comes to an end. The score remains the same. Aurora Christian's totally touchdowns standing up. We'll take a break. 14 zip Eagles. 
Roy Christian fans happy because they've survived Mount Carmel three of their last four drives for Mount Carmel 12 plays 63 yards 15 plays 64 yards 11 plays 54 yards and no points out of any of those exchange of interceptions here is given or a Christian the ball with Anthony Maddy room to run he decides to throw and it's up and over the head Corey Wendell Brandon Mays goes both ways defensively 101 tackles coming in this is ninth interception of the season and that ball looked like it just got away from Hannah it wasn't a receiver really in sight Brandon Mays does a nice job with his ball skills and athleticism gets the turnover a huge turnover for the Eagles right now and like you just talked about the stats don't lie in that the the Golden Aces were really owning the line of scrimmage and, and utilizing long drives to get things going offensively but they're coming up with nothing. Maddie will get about three yards. It will be third down and seven. Nice tackle there by the defensive tackle number 75 Gary Howder. 11 sacks coming into this ball game. 6'2", 305 pound senior at that defensive tackle position. And I have to believe when you look at this game and how it's unfolded, especially in this third quarter and even into the second quarter, I think each coach has really accomplished their goals. What they've wanted to do defensively for the Golden Aces, contain Anthony Maddy, not allow him to break any more big plays. They've done that. And then uh, on defense for the Golden Eagles, bend but don't break, recognizing the power and surge the, and the abilities that the Golden Aces have on offense with their running abilities. Uh, and they've given up some some long drives and, and these, the time of possession is going to be hugely skewed in their favor. But at the end, people are going to look at that scoreboard and recognize that no points have, have come their way. Noah Roberts to punt. Let's see where he can land this one. Nobody deep from Mount Carmel and it will go in to the end zone, out to the 20 we go, calling a 43-yard kick. Final two minutes of the third quarter. Those early touchdowns by Maddie standing up for Aurora Christian. Mount Carmel has to get to work. Dave Bernhardt along with former Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Danon Hughes. We are in the final minute and a half here of the third quarter. Mount Carmel the ball at their own 20-yard line, and Danon, you hate to say it's getting down to a must-score situation with this much time remaining, but the way Mount Carmel can grind the clock out and will grind the clock out, there aren't that many possessions left for them. Dave, you're reading my mind exactly. As we were done on that break, I was thinking the same exact thing, that this is a must-score drive for the Golden Aces. They have to be able to drive the field, try to get yards in chunks. This clock is continuing to move. When you run the ball downhill like they do, and they've been very successful from the second quarter on, as you see, Wampler is coming off the field with a little back injury. You recognize that they can't just settle for the four or five yard gains. They have to do something to get some big yardage and, and get into the end zone. The option play is not one of those as Hannah will get just to the 25 to make it a third down and five. Last three drives or three of the last four drives. We talked about the plays and yardage. Five minute drives. It was a seven minute and 14 second drive for Mount Carmel and then five minutes and 49 seconds. So they take the time off the clock. They they have done exactly what they want to do and keep the ball out of Anthony Maddie's hands. And what you're seeing and we may see a little bit of it later in the ball game as it comes down to crunch time. But there's no urgency factor either by the Golden Aces offensively. They're taking their time in the huddle. Coming up with their plays. And that ball floats and that ball is picked off. Cody Slammons the interception. The last two times Hannah's put the ball in the air, they have been picked. And now you're starting to see the Golden Aces press just a little bit. Sheldon Hannah's his strength is not throwing the ball, has not been throwing the ball. He's, he's a great leader for this offense. But they're forced into a situation now where they have to try to get yardage in chunks. Throws the ball, it sails just a little bit. Right there, his wide receiver has to do a better job of dislodging that ball. That's Alex Kiefer, 5'10", 175-pound senior. As a wide receiver, we're always taught to not allow the defensive back to get the ball. You become a defensive back and knock it away if you have to. 
Maddie did not go down. His hand did. And all of that nets him three yards. And that will bring us to the close of the third quarter. We've had no scoring in the second quarter, no scoring in the third. Two touchdowns on Anthony Maddie run early. A Maddie touchdown pass and standing up as we head to the final 12 minutes here in your 3A championship game. That's a happy bunch of Aurora fans right there. Those folks right there will count that clock down in the final 12 minutes. That's a long time as we start the fourth quarter. We started with second down and seven. With Dana Hughes, I'm Dave Bernhardt, Sophia Minnert, and Aaron Bennett down in the field. And that time, Mount Carmel will slam the door on Maddie. On the stop was Sean Hinleiter. There he is, number one. We talked about him being state qualifier in the 200 meter run in junior high school. He closes it off on Maddie. Well, Dana, a lot of coaches will tell you you can throw all the stats you want out there, but touchdowns and turnovers are the ones that matter. Time of possession, sometimes one of the most misleading statistics, and it's a big number for Mount Carmel here tonight. Well, it's huge right now. You got about 25 minutes for Mount Carmel to 11 minutes for the Eagles of Aurora Christian. And uh, you take away those two first two drives of the ball game, and this has been a pretty even game, probably swayed a little bit more towards Mount Carmel because of what they've been able to do with the extended drives. Maddie running away from the blitz was looking for Roberts and you saw again balls had been thrown to this near sideline have just sailed on the quarterbacks. Yes they have and now in this situation you can anticipate third and fourth down they want to be able to get the drive or move the ball downfield and, and live on defense again but I guarantee you when Anthony Maddie comes to the Robert sideline Robert and coach Don Beebe speaks with him he's going to say okay next time we get the ball don't throw it away. You want to be able to allow it to milk the clock as much as possible because if they're not going to be able to get first downs, you want that ball, the, the clock to continue to move, live for the next down. If you have to call a timeout, you call it with one second left on the play clock and utilize where they're at right now for the, for the, to try to get the win in this ball game. On the defense, that's a five yard penalty. Substitution penalty on Mount Carmel, not enough for the first down. Aurora Christian will have to punt. This is the second consecutive three and out here for the Eagles. So we heard Don Beebe say we're going to get conservative. I don't think he meant three plays punt, three plays punt. No, they definitely, they're not accustomed to being that type of offense. But now it, can't, it becomes a field position ball game. Being able to knock this punt down into and, and bring the Golden Aces with their backs to the end zone. Punt nearly blocked. Wampler was in there. On it, couldn't get it, and this ball will hop up, down, and stop at the 28-yard line. Exactly 11 minutes to play in this game. It's all up to the maroon and gold. They want to get back in it, trailing 14 to nothing. The 2011 IHSA football playoffs are brought to you by Country Financial, and we appreciate Country Financial's support. They're helping bring you eight championship football games this weekend. This is the 3A title game. Of course, coming up next, a highly anticipated matchup, the defending state champs from Rochester. They will take on Richmond Burton. You like your wide open offense? You watch Rochester. You like it pounded up the gut? How is it that uh, Pat Elder, the head coach of Richmond Burton, calls his offense blunt force trauma? Yes. Well, we've got that for you as well. That comes up after this one. Right now, Mount Carmel going backwards, faced with a second and 12. And it's been first downs here in the second half that have not been that kind here to Mount Carmel. And Hannah will have to go to the air again. Third interception. A flag is down. Ryan Settle has the pick. Well, the flag was thrown after the interception. That should hold up. There could be a illegal block in the midst of it. You can tell right now that Sheldon Hanna down by 14 is not in his comfort zone having to put the ball in the air. Well, he's not. He comes into this ball game. We talked about it earlier. He had 10 touchdowns, but eight interceptions into this ball game and has thrown three today. Again, just two wide receivers out in coverage. 
Nice job by Ryan Suttle, the outside linebacker for the Eagles, right there at the right place, right time. That was an interception on the run on the back, back, block in the back, back, on the return on the team, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So you see, or you heard the penalty call, a 10 yard penalty. Sheldon Hanna will have to play some defense. He's thrown three straight interceptions, back to back to back to end Mount Carmel drives. You saw the number 34, Kenny McCracken, get a hand on the ball and tipped it up there for Suttle. And right now, Darren Peach is taking a look at a situation that he is none too happy about. Or Christian, the ball at the 31 of Mount Carmel. There's Suttle. He mays and slammings with the interceptions. Remember the last two times the Eagles have had the ball, they've gone three and out. On the ground to Mays. One Randy Mays is all here. They'll look to grind some clock here. Exactly. When you talk about running the, the clock down late in ball games, it's also referred to as a four-minute offense. And now it, we're inside ten minutes, and obviously there's more time than four minutes. But the the mindset behind that, and one of the best ones at that was uh, Jerome Bettis with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where they would. Put him in, especially towards the end of his career, in that four-minute offense situation where his it was everyone in the stadium knew he was getting the ball. The design was to move the chains and, and keep the clock on your side. Well, that time Mays has swarmed under a pad the on the shoulder pass. This number 28, Dallas Cook. But Dallas Cook came through on the turnover and the interception. He had a touchdown saving tackle on Ryan Suttle as he was returning it and he comes through with a huge hit right here. Just shoots that A gap and meets Brandon Mays just at the time he gets the ball from Anthony Matty. It could have been uh, a situation where a turnover could have come into play but a nice job by Mays holding on to it. Now it's a third down and eight. Matty has Roberts open over the middle. Roberts touchdown. Noah Roberts, the sophomore, 29 yards at a 20 to nothing Aurora Christian lead. Excellent job of execution on the play action in the backfield. One of the strengths of Anthony Matty is his running ability. He also does a great job in leading this offense, specifically with the play action in the backfield. Not too often do they have two running backs back there where they don't give them the ball. But a nice job just running a seam route by Noah Roberts. Catches the ball in traffic. Touchdown, Eagles. Noah Roberts, the brother of Grayson Roberts, a wide receiver on this team. They were both brothers of Jordan Roberts. He was the record-setting quarterback in 2008 when Aurora Christian finished second to Bloomington Central Catholic. Noah Roberts was a water boy on that particular team. And here he has a touchdown grab in a 3A title game. And the touchdown that seems to be one that could seal the victory for the Eagles right now especially when you see what is being displayed offensively by the Golden Aces but how about that throw nice job going up for it catching the ball in traffic rebounding just like a basketball player would play action in the backfield the protection up front nice job on the left side Jonah Walker we haven't talked about him very much he's done an excellent job at that left tackle position Josh Cook at the right tackle Good protection, great execution, touchdown, 21 nothing. The Golden Eagles, you can see him get down and that knee drops. I'd say that wasn't a touchdown and that's a very tough position to be in if you're that back judge right there, but nevertheless, the points are on the board. Second touchdown toss of the night for Anthony Maddy. Actually, if you're Mount Carmel with where that ball was going to end up, you probably just assume the touchdown happened sooner than later because there's still eight and a half minutes to play. Exactly, because that would give them an opportunity for at least one more play. You're exactly right, Dave. One more play where that play could have taken upwards of 30 seconds off the clock. And if they're going to score, you'd want it done quickly rather than later. Not sparkling numbers by Maddie tonight. He came in completing 60% of his passes. Just seven of 21 tonight. However, he has accounted for all three touchdowns. Nothing new there for Aurora Christian. This is Condal to the outside. And that play is strung up. 
Ryan Suttle, the outside linebacker, there to make the tackle. Again, for the short game, second and nine yards for the Golden Aces. And you know, they've just gotten out of sorts. And you kind of, you feel bad for Sheldon Hanna, a, a, a great competitor, a leader for this, seat, this team this entire season, playing the free safety position, also playing quarterback, not coming off the field. Formation here, a little bit unorthodox, but it will net yardage to 32. A flag is down, so when we get back, we can describe the, the formation here. We had one center who snapped the ball, what, about 10 yards diagonally. The running back took it up. The flag is down. Here's the formation. Well, most of the time, you see this formation on extra points. The swinging gate where you, you want to get the defense set and then run from that outside in and, and right there. Illegal formation, offense, five yard penalty, repeat the down. Might they have had too many men on the line? It might, yes, exactly, that's my point is that they probably had too many people lined up on the line of scrimmage. You would think that it shouldn't matter if you're not running a pass play, it shouldn't matter how many people on the line of scrimmage, but that is the rule, you have to have a certain amount. And as far as the snap is concerned, people get confused with the snap. That ball, it, do, it only has to go backwards. It does not have to go through the center's legs. Looking to screen this way, and it bounces in front of Kiefer. Well, Sheldon Hanna has had, uh, what, about the last 15 minutes of his life that hasn't been the most spectacular. Three interceptions in the last touchdown. He was on the coverage. It's just a very uncomfortable feeling or the senior quarterback from Mount Carmel. You're exactly right, and to be a senior, and I remember my senior year in high school, I was a quarterback on a losing state championship team, and uh, that's that's a taste that just never goes away. And you always relish the times in high school and, and the successes, and you also remember some of the failures. That young man has had a, a great season. He's led this team to a 12-1 record. They're just falling short at the wrong time. Timeout will be called by Mount Carmel. When we come back, it will be third down and 14 for the Aces. The Aurora Christian fans feeling pretty good right now. Aurora Christian urging their defense one more time. The last three possessions that defense has been out there. They have intercepted Sheldon Hanna, and it's a third down and 14. The Golden Aces now. Hanna complete to Condal. Condal. Will be five yards short of the first down. Great defensive effort tonight by Mount Carmel. The defensive coordinator for uh, defensive effort for Aurora Christian. The defensive coordinator for the Eagles, brother Dave Beebe, the brother of Don Beebe. And Dan Beebe, yet another brother, is the athletic director at Aurora Christian. Chad Beebe, of course, one of the receivers. There's a monopoly in Aurora. <laughs> It's always great to see families come together. We talked about Noah, and Noah and Grayson Roberts and what they've done, and uh, the legacy that they've had with this program as well. I give credit to Hannah just to get rid of that ball. It's an incomplete pass. He was under heavy pressure by Ryan Suttle. Playmakers make plays, and what we're seeing time and time again in this ball game is Ryan Suttle does a nice job. Avoiding the block, making the tackle in the open field right there, holding on. Nice job by Sheldon Hanna to get rid of that ball, but the playmakers just kind of rise to the top. It's just the cream that rises to the top for this Eagles team. And you talk about the players, obviously, Anthony Maddie's one of them, the key guy, Brandon Mays offensively and defensively, Grayson and Noah Roberts and Ryan Suttle done an excellent job. Corey Window. Great job on the, on the second touchdown of the game and his catching ability. Just a, a, a very concerted effort by this entire Aurora Christian Eagles program. And three straight interceptions and then turning the ball over on downs. Mount Carmel has to go play defense deep in their own territory. You just get a feeling those folks in the white uniforms there, Aurora Christian, they are smelling it right now with about seven minutes to play. The first ever championship for Don Beebe, for Aurora Christian, and just a, a great story all around. We talked about the family atmosphere, the brothers that are involved, the nephews, the son, uh, the injuries that they've had to overcome. 
just a true testament of the quality program that Don Beebe and his staff run. Manny working up a block to the 15, to the 10. Anthony Manny will be down in the five yard line. First and goal, Eagles. 21 yards for Anthony Manny. Tonight, Manny running for 145 yards. Another nice job, he said, going into halftime. Coming out in second half, we're going to put the ball in this young man's hands. Put it in his hands more, allow him to use his athleticism. He does a great job right there, making people miss getting yards and chunks, leading this offense, making plays on defense. Great job of preparation. We spoke with Don Beebe earlier this week and uh, amidst a lot of sound like chaos in the background, <laughs> family and, and children, he was ready to look at some film. He said he wasn't gonna sleep. It was gonna be about preparation. That was the number one key. He treated this like the first game of the season and uh, his team has come out well prepared and ready for this ball game and and uh, you just have to give credit to that man right there and what he's been able to do for this team this school uh, changing things around a winning atmosphere great people behind him and alongside of him uh, in his eighth year as the head coach he lost the championship in 2008 and they are on the brink right now the field is spread Second and goal from the four. Manny. That's worth six. Fourth touchdown of the day for Aurora Christian. Manny, two on the ground, two in the air. 27 0 with six and a half to play. Excellent job of this young man. You can see on the right side a great block by the center, Ryan Zawinski. Seal block on the right side. He seals him to the left, opens up the gate for Maddie to scamper in on the right side for the touchdown. Extra point is good. And the halftime lead of 14 to nothing has been doubled up now. 28 zip. If you talk about offense that scored four touchdowns in this game. How about the defense that has been so tough when they've needed it. In the first half down 14 nothing. Fourth and goal. Stop. Brandon Mays doing the job. Coming up with big plays at the right time has been the key to this victory for the, goal, for the Eagles. And again Anthony Manny on fourth and goal inside the five with the stop. Mount Carmel here in the second half trying to get back into it. Mays the interception turns the ball the other way. One of three interceptions tonight for Aurora Christian in this shutout defensive effort. Still six and a half to play. That 28 to nothing lead and Anthony Matty is tied a 3A record. Total points by an individual tonight. Or tied a record for touchdowns tonight. He has a right to be happy. You can see the smile on his face. Not up to his standards as far as numbers are concerned. Seven for 22 and 88 yards. But overall, championship style football played by that young man and this Aurora Christian, this entire team. And he was looking up at the video board in the south end zone here at Memorial Stadium and he saw a picture of himself. And right next to his face was a number 28. That's how many points he's been accounting for here tonight for that group. Red, white, and black. He's going to have a bright future at Western Michigan next year. Uh, you know, Don Beebe couldn't say enough about that young man. He said he's a passionate leader. He said he scored a touchdown earlier this season and cry, was crying as he got to the sideline. And uh, Coach Beebe wondered why he was crying. It was just the emotion of him leading this team and scoring for his team and, and, and just knowing that his heart was totally in it. He said that's the character of that young man. Exactly the prototype of what you want to have as a leader on your team. Coming up on six minutes to play as Mount Carmel will try to put something in the end zone. That's something they were unable to do back in 2002. The last time they were playing in a state championship game, they were shut out by Driscoll on that evening. Be about two yards short of the first down. The semifinal win over Unity 
I remember in that game, Aurora Christian was trailing 26-21 with eight minutes left before coming from behind and scoring 29 straight points to close that one out, a 50-26 win in those semifinal victories. According to Don Beebe, those are the ones that are the most fun yeah. because you, you, you know you get to prepare for the big one, and he's experienced in that, having played in six Super Bowls. Winning the conference championships, of course, to get there. Sorry, I had to bring that up once again, <laughs> Dana. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> but but now it, it's his point is like, okay, you know, five and a half minutes away here, and, and unless something miraculous happens, of course, he will have a state championship, and then Monday will come, and it will be now what? Yeah, Practice exactly. Practice is over. <laughs> you know what? He's lived for this moment, and you know, and I failed to do my full research, Dave, because I don't know if he ever won a championship in high school. But you have to figure that this may be his first ever time where he won a championship when you consider what he was able to do at the uh, at the NFL level always making it to the ball game and never winning it. You know this may have this may be one of his opportunities. Hannah puts the ball right on the money down to the 20 yard line and he finds Alex keeper for 34 yards best ball thrown tonight by Hannah. Very nice job. Nice throw by Sheldon Hanna. We talked about the difficulty of throwing the ball with the wind behind your back. You can see he throws it right on the money and a great job of catching the ball by Kiefer in traffic. First down right at the edge of the red zone again for the Golden Aces. Mount Carmel with a 15-13 advantage in first downs over Aurora Christian tonight. The ball bounces in on the Far sideline looking to run a little screen there to Kiefer. Looked like Kiefer's knee was down. Tried to drop just a low throw. They came with the fake of the jet sweep. Try to come back with the wide receiver screen at the top of your screen. You can see just a nice little smoke route on the outside. He drops that left knee to catch the ball. Can't get back up and run. Second down and 10. Turning the corner, can Wagner do it? He does, stays in bounds, and that's a touchdown. Nathaniel Wagner from 20 yards out, somehow he stayed in bounds. The Golden Aces are on the board at the 427 mark of this game. A great job of tightrope in the sideline there by Nathaniel Wagner. We've seen multiple big plays by him on the jet sweep, running on that perimeter. You can see what he does. He comes in motion, gets that late pitch right at Nice job by Sheldon Hanna getting him and then breaking three tackles down the sideline. And right there, you can see the balance and athleticism gets him for the score. Mount Carmel to go one point at a time. Condell's kick is good. And it's a 28 to 7 advantage now for Aurora Christian. Daniel Wagner's been a busy man on both sides of the ball. Jim hit this sideline. Stay in bounds. There you go. Good job. Excellent job right there. They got uh, that drive, although it was not as long as the drives that they sustained on offense throughout this second half, the big plays came into effect. Nice pass from Hannah down the sideline. The Kiefer sets things up. They get it on the 20-yard line. And then another big play right there by Nathaniel Wagner for the score. His sixth touchdown of the season came in with uh, 74 for 605 yards rushing and uh, gets the touchdown right there. The much needed touchdown for the Golden Aces in this championship ballgame. Mount Carmel officially considered an independent school by the Illinois High School Association. That's because six of their opponents are Indiana schools. They're the only team in Indiana to win a conference title in another state. They remember the Big Eight Conference in Indiana. Of course, Mount Carmel, Southeastern Illinois. Look for the onside kick here. Need a big hop. They got it. Loose ball. Aurora Christian underneath it on the bottom of the pile. They got the hop they wanted. They got the deflection they wanted. There's no maroon jerseys in the vicinity. Number 15, Cody Slammons comes Cody up with Slammons. it. Nice job of the Eagles. Cody Slammons sticking with it. A well-executed onside kick by Pete Condell. 
their halfback and punter and kicker for this Golden Aces team. And right there, that last bounce is the one that you're looking for. The ball has to be caught. You see, number five, Noah Roberts had that opportunity and the ball, just as it's done all game long, took the right bounce for the Aurora Christian Eagles. Dylan Farmer, number 85 from Mount Carmel, had the closest shot for the Aces. Here's Suttle. Suttle with a nice cut. Across midfield, but a flag is down behind the play as Suttle goes to the 45. Our referee, Brad Stearns, will give you that call in just one moment, but you can tell the direction that Aurora Christian is walking. It's not a good thing for the Eagles. Right in holding territory right inside the trenches. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. I gotta believe that somewhere here in the next couple of minutes that head coach Don Beebe is going to get his son Chad Beebe a, a catch here. He's been injured all season long. When he came back, he was an impact player, came back late in the season before re-injuring his collarbone. Dana talked about how x-rays initially on it showed a broken collarbone and a broken foot the next day. Nothing. Oh, look at a quick feet by Maddie. He's going to Western Michigan to play quarterback, and he plans on doing that. But a lot of folks say that that's an athlete right there. You can put him in a lot of different spots and have success. Well, his running ability, the way he's able to, to duck and dodge in traffic, Nobody's really getting a, a real solid hit on him. The key, what I consider a key play, uh, playmaking ability of run, a ball, guys with the ball, that run with the ball, are uh, guys that don't allow people to get solid hits on him. I played with an NFL great Hall of Famer, Marcus Allen, never took a square hit. Always knew how to sidestep at the last second, and that preserves his body and, and actually maximizes that athleticism. And he gets to the outside, trying to stay in bounds to keep that clock hey, running. Uh, he can't quite do it, as he will be a three yards short of the first down. And the clock comes to three minutes and one second. And one thing to keep an eye on here, obviously with the 28-7 lead with three minutes left, Rora Christian feels pretty secure in this one, barring any crazy turnovers. But one thing to keep an eye on is if Aurora Christian can go to their victory formation to take the final snaps of this game, they are going to run Mitch Holtz out there along with R.J. Morris just to be in the championship game. Of course, both those players suffered ACL season-ending injuries in the early rounds of the playoffs, but they want to get them a final snap. So let's keep an eye on if that situation arises. Matty looking for the first down. He has it to Wendell. Wendell dancing around out there with Clayton Cole. And we'll say he got enough for progress to the 49. The chains will move. As soon as they're set, the clock will move. Wendell, of course, had a touchdown catch early in this game. That's his fifth reception tonight. It's another player on this Eagles program that has had an outstanding year. Only a junior window. Came into the game with 18 touchdowns. That is 19. Coach Don Beebe considers him a leader of this team. And you know what? He, so many athletes on this field right now for this Eagles program and they've all come through with, with some form or fashion with plays today to help this team to victory. The hole for Mays. He runs through a tackle. He'll get to the 29. 20 yard run for Brandon Mays. Maddie with 163 yards tonight. Subtle with 44, now 62 for Mays. And that clock is moving and a fresh set of downs. We'll take a look at number four, that's Mitch Holtz. 6'1", 208 pound senior linebacker. Uh-oh, suiting up next to him, number 64, R.J. Morris. And now you have to play the clock and play the downs. You don't, Aurora Christian, I don't think wants to score here. Manny, though, may not be able to resist. Anthony Manny, he can take it in if he wants. Anthony Manny will score. 
<laughs> I, I honestly believe, Danon, he had thoughts about not scoring so that Holtz and Morris could get into the game, but instead, fifth touchdown accounted for by Matty tonight. I think it was Onside he... kick! <laughs> <laughs> There's Mitch Holtz. Hey, they're going to send Holtz. There we go. Holtz and Morris are going to get out there for the extra point. All right. <laughs> That's a true competitor speaking right there. He's talking about an onside kick. <laughs> up, up possibly 35 to 7. Now, you know what they may do here? They may take a knee here, you know, because obviously you don't want to risk any other injuries to. Holtz and Morris. Yeah. But give credit to the touchdown run for Anthony Maddy. That was a 29 yarder. Yeah. And I think when you talk about, we wondered if he was going to kneel down. I think when he cut back across the green, right here, he knew he, he couldn't run out of bounds. So he cut across the green thinking that maybe he'd get tackled in the middle of the field. And there was no one else around him. He had nothing else to do but to run into the end zone. He realized it as his buddies got to him in the end zone that he should have kneeled down, but at that point it was too late. Sometimes your athleticism just takes over. It's not that you're being selfish. There's nothing about that young man that says he's selfish. But uh, you know what, if, if he had to take it back, I'm sure, like you said, he'd kneel down at the five-yard line and let his buddies get in the ball game. But how about this great testament of sportsmanship, recognizing the All-State player in R.J. Morris and Mitch Holtz had over 100 tackles before he was injured. Very emotional time for those young men. Morris, the fullback, Holtz, the tailback. Manny takes a knee to make sure those two get a snap in a state championship game. That's a great moment in high school football right there. That's a moment that none of those men will ever forget. As they grow old, and we talked about it earlier, I played in a lot of NFL games, a lot of college games. I remember just about every one of my high school games, especially the state championship. And it's an emotional time right there. That player right there is, is very thankful to Coach Beebe for the, for the gesture and the opportunity. And uh, they just love to be a part of this great time for Aurora Christian. Oh, uh, you'd think. Aurora Christian came in. They were ranked second in Class 4A. This is a 3A championship game. They came in ranked second in 4A through the whole season. You have your two start two of your star players injured in the first two rounds of the playoffs and you're favored to get here one of the favorites to get here how devastating that can be they kind of turned into quasi assistant coaches the last couple of weeks and now they will get their name in the books good job good job guys great for those young men we did it we did it a lot of emotion on that sideline. So proud of you. So proud of you. Oftentimes when you're injured in these type of games, you feel like you're not a part of the team or you're not a part of the success. Those two young men definitely are. They couldn't have gotten here without them. Now the other way, Mark Carmel the return. Aurora Christian in the eight years of Don Beebe qualified for the playoffs every single year. Kickoff return of 27 yards and look at the emotion. Great to see. Special times. We recognize the battles that they've they've gone through. And you, know, you ask Coach Don Beebe about his experiences and he'll tell you, you've been to Super Bowls, been a part of great teams, but the number one thing you miss is the camaraderie the fellowship and the teamwork that you have, knowing that the blood, sweat, and tears that you've gone through in the offseason, the emotional ups and downs that football brings, and you can see that displayed by those two young men right there, two guys that were injured at crucial the snaps of this season. Substitute infraction on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. When you see that emotion in this situation, yes, they're happy they won, but this is what makes high school and college unique from professional yeah. because these people, the seniors, know this is their last high school game. This team knows this is the last time everybody is going to be together here in the, the final moments of this game. You're exactly right, Dave. It's 
It can be an emotional time. It's a high. It's kind of a conflicting emotional time where you have the highs and the, the, uh, of, of winning and, and being successful, but the lows of knowing this is the last opportunity that a lot of these young men will wear that white jersey and be of one accord and one unit. And uh, so it's, it's, there's a lot of good and a lot of bad involved, but nevertheless, it's always great memories. And it cut it up. He will have himself first down to the 46 yard line. Sheldon Hand on the keeper. For Aurora Christian, they will claim the first state football title in the city of Aurora's history. And they felt that. They knew that. They felt uh, not necessarily a responsibility, but an opportunity to do that very thing for that city, the western suburbs of Chicago. Uh oh. <laughs> he is lucky that the temperature is still in the 50s. He still said, you can read his lips, he said oh, it's, it's still kind of cold. I'm, lie. But, uh, I'm just glad it's 60 degrees out here. There you go. <laughs> hey, he, read your, he read your thoughts right there, oh, Dave. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Good job of screening. Good job. That's a full dose right there. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't have his cell phone in his pocket because <laughs> might have to get on that insurance plan. <laughs> Final seconds. And a complete to Keeper. Keeper for a first down. That will stop the clock with three seconds left. They will reset it. <laughs> And Aurora Christian will get themselves the 3A state football title. Congratulations to the Eagles. And for Darren Peach, it's the third time that he has been in this state championship game. And for the third time, he will take that second place trophy home to Mount Carmel, his alma mater. See the heads bowed for Mount Carmel right now, but nothing to be ashamed of. They came into a game 12 and 1 on the season. Uh, a strong opponent in this ball game, very competitive at times throughout this ball game. Coach Darren Peach and his staff uh, have done a great job with this program. Like you said, they've they've had their opportunities in the past. They've come up short in the 01 and 02 have a, a great foundation with their team, the coaches, assistant coaches, very successful. And uh, although this is a tough time to recognize it, the success of this team is not demonstrated just by how they fared today, but this entire season, they've done a great job. They have nothing to be ashamed of. You know, it's the ultimate irony, isn't it? I mean, you see Anthony Matty right there. He accounted for all five touchdowns tonight, three in the ground, two in the air, yet it's the defense. The defense in the first half specifically that really won this game for Aurora Christian. Exactly, and when we talked about in the open and all throughout this week about the contrasting styles of this team offensively, I don't remember any time in that conversation that we said specifically it was gonna be on the defense. It was always gonna be offense, offense, which team would fare better offensively. And uh, you definitely have to give credit to the defense uh, for the Eagles. They did an excellent job when their backs were up against the wall. The game could have been turned, the tide would have been turned if they score at least one of those times when they get into the red zone. They were able to hold them out. 14 to nothing was the score for most of this ball game, and then things opened up in the fourth quarter. See number nine, Anthony Matty. He had a runner-up medal and a runner-up trophy with Joliet Catholic Academy a couple of years ago when he played for the Hilltoppers. This year, in fact, in just a matter of moments, number nine is going to get himself a championship trophy, a first place medal. Aurora Christian, your 3A champ, 34 7 over Mount Carmel. Trophy presentation coming up. The Mount Carmel Golden Aces have uh, just moments ago received.
their Class 3A state runner-up trophy. A very proud season for those Next in Mount Carmel. And now the Aurora Christian Eagles are set to accept their state championship trophy, a 34-7 win. Let's listen in as they receive their awards. On the awards platform. Mr. Klett and Mr. Nagel will present a special medallion to the administrators and individual awards will be presented to Coach Beebe and his team captains. And now Mr. Klett will present this year's state championship class 2A, or excuse me, 3A team trophy to the Eagles of Aurora Christian, who finished the season with a record of 13 wins and one loss. The Aurora Christian Eagles are your 3A state champs. Their first state title, a 34-7 win over Mount Carmel. Hugs all around. They certainly deserve to celebrate tonight. We will be back with more on the IHSA Television Network. Let's send it now over to Aaron Bennett. He is standing by with Mitch Holtz. All right, we are here with one proud member of the Aurora Christian Eagles, Mitch Holtz, uh, holding this championship trophy. You guys have worked all year, all career for this. How does this feel right now? Uh, this is unbelievable. I mean, ever since the Stillman game, guys have been lifting all summer. We were working hard, running, conditioning just to get here. Um, the seniors, we knew what this was like losing. And, you know, we there was nothing more than I, I can't even describe it right now. This is awesome. <laughs> Talk about the, the, the moment there for you and RJ to be able to get into this game when you didn't think you'd be able to, but to, to have a play and, and be a part of this on the field tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't trade this for anything. I mean, I mean, just one play was better than the last three and a half weeks of sitting on the sidelines. Like, I wouldn't change a thing. This is perfect. What do you think this win means, not only to you guys, but to all these folks here, all the fans, the whole community that supported you guys? I mean, we're the first school from Aurora to win it. Um, I mean, that's huge just for the community. And uh, I mean, we have expectations to win it in basketball and baseball, so hopefully bring three home. But I know these people, they've been great all season supporting us, and you know, this is awesome. Congratulations, Mitch. Mitch Holtz and the Aurora Christian Eagles are your 3A state champions. So Aurora Christian joins Dakota and Morrison as 2011 state champions. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Illinois. Dave Bernhardt along with Dane and Hughes, 34-7 for Aurora Christian. They got the scoring started early tonight. Anthony Maddie actually scored early. He scored middle. He scored late. <laughs> Maddie got it started 22 seconds in. Here he busted Dana for 72 yards. Well, you can see his athleticism was displayed early and often in this ball game. But this really got the Eagles going. They were able to utilize a quarterback sneak. The open and spread nature of the defense were able to take advantage of it. Came back with the pass. Strike for the second touchdown to Corey Window. Did a great job on defense as well. It was 14 to nothing at this point. It was first and goal from the five. That was a fourth down stop from the five. This is not the same possession. This is the next Mount Carmel possession on fourth and goal from the five. First it was Mays, then it was Maddie stopping Mount Carmel. It was 14 to nothing at the half thanks to the defense. Then in the second half, Mount Carmel trying to get back in the game. Sheldon Hanna had to throw. Mays, who had made that tackle moments ago, he comes up. This was the first of three straight interceptions. Yes, it was. You know what? And you have to. You have to feel a little bit sad for Sheldon Hanna and what he was doing offensively. Just could not stay in sync with his wide receivers. But you do have to give credit to the defensive backfield of the Eagles. You see uh, Noah Roberts comes through with the touchdown. And then we have Anthony Maddie again. 
to Stanford for his touchdown, responsible for all five touchdowns of this ball game. You can see the stats. Passing yards was not in the favor of Mount Carmel. Pretty balanced offensively, pass and run. Not the vaulted numbers that we're expected to see or that we've been accustomed to see from Anthony Maddie, but still a winning performance. I was going to say, the numbers that matter, that's <laughs> at 34 to 7, right? Exactly, exactly. Aurora Christian, your state champs. When we come back, you're going to hear from the victors. 3A champions hailing from the city of Aurora. It's the Eagles from Aurora Christian. More coming up from Memorial Stadium next. See Richmond Burton warming up there on this end of the field. On the far end of the field is Rochester. That's our 4A game coming up in just a matter of moments. But let's take one final look back here at your 3A championship. One tonight by Aurora Christian, the Eagles. A 34-7 win. And Anthony Matty, we talked about him all night long. He got things started early. He set the tone early with a 72-yard run on the third play of the game. 22 seconds in, it was a 14-0 Aurora Christian lead. And then moments later, in the next possession, he finds Corey Wendell for the seven-yard touchdown pass. And your thought is, hey, this could be a runaway. It's 14 to nothing. But then Mount Carmel came back. The first of three solid drives, but it ends inside the five-yard line. The stop there by Aurora Christian. Next possession, Mount Carmel comes right back in the same spot. They are stopped again on fourth down. The score remains 14 to nothing at this stage. That was in the first half. That was our halftime score. The second half, the defense stayed alive. The ball comes out of Sheldon hand, Hannah's hands a little bit awkward, and Brandon Mays will pick this one off. The first of three interceptions, and then the Sharks smell blood. Anthony Meddy goes to the air. This to Noah Roberts, the sophomore Roberts combination. Meddy, who tonight ran for three touchdowns, he threw for two. This time he's going to do it with his legs. Short little touchdown run here. The lead went to 28 to nothing before Mount Carmel would get on the board. Nathaniel Wagner a touchdown run. Maddie added a touchdown run later. 34-7 your final. Here are your final numbers for Mount Carmel. They rushed for 215 yards. But Nate Danon. Don Beebe told us, watch out for our ground game. His team rushed for 300, almost 200 from Anthony Maddy. Uh, he did an excellent job of leading this team. And like you said, the, Mount Carmel came alive in the second half, but they just could not get the ball in the end zone. And that was the proving factor for the victory for the Eagles. Mount Carmel finishes 12 and two. Let's hear from their head coach, Darren Peach. First of all, you know, I, I just like to say, hey, uh, God is good. All right, got to give all the credit to the man upstairs. Feel very, very blessed uh, to have coached <laughs> this football team this year. Excuse me. Anyway, uh, great game. Uh, kids fought hard. Uh, you know, kind of came down to in the first half. Uh, you know, us not being able to stick those two scores. Uh, you know, in the end zone, we got in red zone. Should, should you know, we we need to play better offensively. Uh, in, inside our own 10 yard line and, and we didn't get it done then but uh, you know give it, give a lot of credit to uh, uh, the team uh, you know across from us uh, Aurora Aurora did a great job of uh, you know buckling up on, on defense when, when they had to and, and uh, you know and making getting the stops <clears throat> Aurora Christian finishes their season 13 and one their only loss coming to Montini, who you will see play in the 5A state championship game tomorrow for Mount Carmel. They bookend their season with 12 straight wins in the middle. And again, it's hard to take that second place trophy home, but that's going to sit in your trophy case and look mighty good for years. Yeah, it will. You know what? And I feel for those young men because they did. They had a great season, and it's unfortunate that somebody has to lose in this game. You give credit to the to both teams because they got here with 12 and 1, one records, and they fought on the field. They have nothing to be ashamed of. But I was in that position we talked about earlier. I lost my state championship. It still stings. It's going to sting for a long time. But in the end, they have nothing. Uh, nothing to, to, to feel bad about. But for Aurora Christian, they get to bring that big trophy home to Aurora. Congratulations to the Eagles, 34-7 winners in 3A. You've got an interesting 4A game coming up next. Stay right there, Rochester and Richmond Burton. <laughs>